Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the channel. Autumn is here. Winter is coming, right? Winter is coming. That's what we've been told. <clears throat> Take care of that real quick. All right. So Mark 47 is sold and gone. That was tough. It was really tough to do, I have to say. Um, you know, you buy these figures, you say to yourself, oh, you know, they're a collection, they're an investment, blah, blah, blah. I'm enjoying them, I'm do it for fun, whatever else. And then when it comes time to sell one, you're like, I don't want to sell it. Mark 47's gone. And boy, oh boy, oh boy. You know, putting all the accessories together and, and going over the figure again and, and uh, looking at it and thinking, God, oh, man, I really like this figure. So I, I think it's going to a nice home. I think you're going to enjoy it when you get it. And uh, um, that one is gone. I also have put up, remember how I bought, I bought two Scarlet Spiders, not because I had ever any intention of selling it, but because I was going to try to make it more like the comic book version of Scarlet Spider. I put that up on eBay, and I also bought two of these movie promo editions. My intent was to have five of these suits for all five uh, movies that he was in, Civil War, Homecoming, Infinity War, in game and far from home this suit was in all five movies so i intended to have five of those so i bought two of the movie promo editions specifically for that so i've posted one of those that haven't been opened on um ebay so a spider punk no a scarlet spider and a movie promo edition are on ebay right now uh they th i think they'll be ending on monday so if you're interested, if you haven't got yours, if you're on the wait list, you want to get it sooner than that, they are available. So what we are going to do today is we're going to open up the movie promo edition that I'm planning on keeping. I, um, again, everything here is for sale, literally. Um, whatever you want, snatch it up. I have... Mark 5 I was planning on putting up. I have not yet. But maybe one of you guys would jump on it. Mark 5 diecast. Um, so I'm probably going to put that up on eBay. I'll probably put up my secret project and my gunmetal. Iron Man, Mark 3, Mark 4. Um, I guess I'll open the one that UPS customized for me. Was it UPS? This is shipped by? Yep. UPS customized this. So this will be the one I'll open. And the one I will be selling <clears throat> on eBay will be the one that hasn't been damaged on the shipper. So you'll get the better one. There's no reserve on it. There's, there, I think I put a buy it now price on there and it started at, I don't know, I think I started them both at 250 bucks. I think that's what I paid for them. Plus shipping, plus tax, blah, 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 blah. One Sixth Outfitters, by the way, is selling the Peter B. Parker in two versions. Um, they're based out of New York. One Sixth Outfitters are. And uh, it's made by Young Rich Toys. They're the same ones that made the Miles Morales figures that will be coming out shortly. And so you can get Peter B. Parker in his Spider-Man suit with his, uh, you know, his um, dad bod, if you will. And, uh, and he has one... He comes with one head sculpt with that. And then you can get Peter B. Parker in his green coat and sweatpants and the, the mismatched shoes with two head sculpts. And he comes with all sorts of other stuff. I think he comes with a hamburger and I think he comes with a with a shake or a, 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 a Coke can, a Coke cup. And I think he comes with um, a coffee. And I don't remember. Uh, he comes with a bunch of accessories. Like the, I think he comes with two different USB drives. You know, what do you call them? Thingamajigs or... Much of a college or something. He said, "There's always a, there's always a something or other that has to be in, installed." I forget what he called it, the movie. And, and by the way, I, I understand that they're going to be making a sequel to that movie. So, oh well, good. The um, UPS customization didn't puncture 
this, there's enough room here. See how deep that is? That deep? Right there, about know, three quarters of an inch. So the package is not damaged. Lucky, lucky. So this is the exact same figure that was released with Spider-Man Homecoming. Only they just didn't include all the accessories and they sold it for less money. Noble, how you doing, man? Sure, it's quiet in the room today. I guess uh, y'all are like, I already know this figure. I don't need to see it. Well, I understand that. I got um, got my scroll heads in. Maybe we'll play with those a little bit. I had pre-ordered the Winter Soldier with the dissolving arm, and I uh, canceled the pre-order. They contacted me and said it was available, ready to be paid for, and I canceled that. And uh, I'd also had a, a champion pool that I was going to try to customize for um, you know Deadpool collection, uh, champion with it. Champion of the Universe, something like that. I forget what he called himself. And um, instead of fighting him, they admitted they let him join the Deadpool Corps. And so I was going to customize a, a figure for that. I canceled that. So I won't be getting those that I had intended on having. And trust me, I mean I'm not I'm not going to stop collecting. Um, it's just a minor setback. Bills that have to be paid right now. Uh, hospital bills and whatnot that have to be paid right now and um, so I certainly don't want to go to collections <clears throat> you don't get to drive Mercedes Benz's if you have your accounts in collections it doesn't work out that way you have to take care of things properly CBS Sci-Fi hello there scroll heads can we see one certainly yeah um, let me crack those open right now. So I got three of them. And literally my intention was, I don't know, just to mix and match them, just pop them around different bodies. Be a little... This month it would be Nick Fury, and next month it would be Black Widow. Who knows? Who knows, right? So these are made by Toys Era. PE026. I don't know how much they were. Relatively inexpensive, considering. Let's put some light on it. So there it is in the package. Now it comes to you. Head sculpt and hands. All right, so you're gonna have to buy neck collars uh, or uh, adapters. So, uh, for it to fit whichever figure that you want to put it on. It comes with a huge opening right there, that deep. So, if you're going to want to pop it on property, you're going to need to get the, uh, the little neck pieces. Two separate hands here. We have a left um, relaxed casual hand. And the little ring finger is compressed in a little further than the other. I'm curious if all of them are that way.
Yes. Sure are. Um, the ring finger is in just a little bit. If you happen to see if I can put that in an angle that you can see that really good. There you go. I don't know why, but it is. Standard adapter there. Having a little um, network slowdown over there on my comments. I see comments scrolling up here on my, on my phone that I'm recording with. They haven't made it over to my computer for whatever reason. And this one's like a, a holding hand. So you can put a weapon in it, I would imagine. Maybe a pistol, maybe, maybe a um, Black Widow's batons. Maybe... War Machines baton. So, whoever you want to scroll the character out as, they have a hand that you can hold something with as well. Um, I don't know if this resembles any one scroll specifically. You guys think he looks like any one of them per se, or just kind of generic? Looks pretty good. There's no question about what it is, right? I like that the, um, I don't know what you would call them, not really wrinkles, but the lines are very defined, very deeply cut into that. I don't know if you can see that or not. There, that's a pretty good angle to let you see how deep those lines are. They really cut into that. They did a really good job. What is that? I like it. So if that's what you want to do, if you want to make your collection a little unique, have fun with it, Tell a story. Here are the scroll heads. When I seen that, I was like, yeah, I'm jumping on that. I have to have me some scroll heads. Now if I could just find a... Uh, I what was the cat's called? What was the actual name of the cat? That's not a cat. That's a Flarn. Flarn? Is that what it was? Very nice. Are they all the same? Yeah, they, they were, there was only just one. There's just one head sculpt that they made. They didn't make multiples, so it wasn't like buying the A, B, and C version of them. It was just all, just one. Just one scroll head. What do I think about the negative soup? Uh, I think it's a definite go for me. Heck yeah. Spain! Wow! Greetings. Franco, glad to have you. Spain was one of my favorite countries when I was traveling the world when I was younger. I really enjoyed Spain. I'd, I've been to uh, Mediterranean cities of Spain. I've been to uh, Benidorm and Palma de Mallorca and Malaga. And I really had a good time at all those when I was a, a younger man. Really beautiful coastal areas. Spain is gorgeous. I, I hope it is still the same as it was when I was there back in the 80s. I hope it's still just as beautiful. I enjoyed Spain. Yeah, very good. I think it looks like the main scroll out of Captain Marvel. I kind of thought that too, but wasn't sure exactly. Um, so the lettering on here is raised up. You can feel the lettering. Other than that, it's totally smooth. We have a Sideshow exclusive, meaning that you can't buy this at like Big Bad Toy Store. Um, you'd have to buy it from uh, the uh, Hot Toys official distributors like uh, Toy Sapiens and I don't remember all the other ones that are about, that are the places that sell specific this and so it has on here Venice Spider-Man Arrival Italy right here. Uh, far from home suit 
You know what I mean? Because that's when he was traveling. He didn't travel uh, to Europe in the other movies. Um, and like I was saying, it's this exact same suit. It's his suit. It's his, it's his main go-to suit. It's like the suit that um, 616 Spider-Man has worn since the 60s. So this is the Marvel Cinematic Universe go-to suit. And that was the whole purpose of getting multiples myself, because he's been in five movies. Um, right, there's Prague. And it's like these are stamps that you would see in your, in your passport as you travel around, by the way. So that was the what they're trying to do here. Top of the box. Bottom of the box. No, but you got a lot on your mind. I guess I'm beating you to the punch. So just the basic figure, and I think it was just the uh, you know two hundred and fifty dollars or something thereabouts, two sixty, two seventy. I don't remember. Uh, and I'm pretty sure the um, homecoming suit was more. Comes with more stuff. If I remember correctly, there were two versions of the homecoming suit. You can get it with the uh, the, the the jacket and the and the and the backpack and the whole nine yards. It came with the head sculpt, Tom Holland head sculpt. This does not. So there's all the accessories where they belong. And it's good to see this because, for instance, when I was boxing up that Mark 47, I had to reference my video to know what went where. I forgot exactly what all accessories went where in the box. It took me took me a couple of days to wrangle up all the accessories. What what I what I find that I've done in the past is I'll take a uh, I don't know, a figure base or uh, a, uh, a stand or a hand or an accessory and I'd be like yeah this may come with this figure but it really should go with this figure and I'll have displays two or three areas of different things so when I was boxing up Mark 47 I had to find all the pieces put them back together again send them out and the batteries too I, I never use the batteries that's not true I sometimes put the batteries in for displays uh, for the videos here but I don't keep the batteries in not anymore. I have, matter of fact, I should show you that. Um, there was a time about two years ago, I don't remember when it actually happened, maybe been three years ago. Uh, the uh, I'm sitting in the uh, the other room there on my main computer, and all of a sudden I start hearing pop, and I'm like, what the hell is that? And so I came in here and I I heard it again, pop, and I was like, what in the world is going on? And long story short, these little batteries were exploding. So you do not want to leave your batteries and your figures. And we have very low humidity where I live here in California. Um, So I would imagine how it could possibly even be worse in an area with high humidity. But this is full of batteries that have literally just exploded. All these batteries in here just broke clean open. Let me get a little tweezer and I'll show you. I don't want to touch them. You see that? I'm literally holding the little area that's popped up. Let's see if I can get it. I'll touch it quickly. Right there. Let me just do it with the camera. You see that? 
they just pop right open. So imagine this is in your figure. And then you have little junk that comes out of it. So these, I think, are... Um, what are they? Silver oxide? I don't remember what these are. But this is the little stuff that comes out of it. It's inside the battery. They just explode. So I don't put any of the batteries in the equipment and leave them in there. There's a, a lid for one right there. So this can happen to your figures. Here's the bottom where that lid was. If you were curious what's inside one of these batteries. It's pretty bad. Keep turning this light off. Makes it so you can see it better. Yeah, there you go. It's the bottom. So yeah, keep your batteries out of your figures. Or you'll be sorry. I can tell you. So as soon as I figured out that's what it was and these were in a box these weren't ones that were in one of the figures I instantly right then and there cleaned out all my figures took all the batteries out of them and fortunately none of them had exploded inside the figures so keep that in mind also in purchasing the older figures where the batteries were installed by Hot Toys so the next time you buy a Never removed from box 2012 Mark 21 Midas. Don't be too surprised if the batteries are exploded inside of it. So anyhow, I threw the batteries in with that Mark 47 as well. That's how it came. And I don't couldn't tell you how good the batteries were. They're I think I've had that figure for two years. I, I really don't remember, to tell you the truth. How long I had that figure for? Was it two years ago that that came out? I will get it back. I'll be paying for it, I'm sure. It's all right. Got to do what you got to do, right? Uh, da -da 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 -ba -ba. 330 pounds. Oh, that reminds me of that stupid YouTube video. That girl who literally thought when they told them things cost pounds instead of dollars, she thought they were talking about the weight of the product. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Noble's a little off today. I'm glad to hear that. I live in Andalusia. It is one of the autonomous communities of the country. I'm specifically from Jerez. Malaga is also in Andalusia. Malaga was beautiful. Thanks for your answer. You're welcome. Talking about negative suit, I think it can only be bought at SciShow. I think you're right. And not in other stores. I think you're right. Uh, it's definitely an a, a, a exclusive. Uh, yeah, definitely. No batteries in your figures. Don't keep the batteries in your figures. You'll be sorry. And I'm not trying to curse you. I'm not speaking a curse on you. It's a warning from my own personal experience of hearing these things pop. I mean, I'm in the other room. I'm good probably 20 feet away, and I'm hearing these things popping in the box here, a little battery box I have of all the batteries in it. And uh, so it, it, it was not a quiet thing at all. So let's get Civil War Spidey over here. Or he was actually called Homecoming Spider-Man. He wasn't sold as a Civil War Spider-Man. But of course, that's where we've seen him first was in Civil War. Remember that old movie called Empire Strikes Back? Let's turn these lights back on again. I think it helps for what we're doing here. 
and uh, we'll be able to compare it. Now, of course, it doesn't come with the Tom Holland head sculpt. Um, and this is the uh, a traditional one. I forget which figure it is. One of the Spider-Man, the head sculpt is a, a magnet. I think it's the Iron Spider. Um, so this is a, a traditional one. So I would imagine it would be interchangeable. For whatever God knows reason, you'd want to interchange this for that. I, I, I don't know. I mean, if you have this, you've got this. I suppose maybe if you're going to buy just this because you didn't get that and you want to add it on to that, then I suppose you could do that. Because keep in mind, this is not the battle damaged Tom Holland. The battle damaged Tom Holland comes only with the homemade Spider Man suit. So if you want the battle damaged Tom Holland, homemade Spider Man suit. And I have yet to see any third party sell a battle damaged Tom Holland. And I don't feel like taking, you know, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't feel like taking him out of this pose. I've done that on a couple occasions. And uh, it took a little bit of finagling to get him just right. You know what I mean? To get him just how he is. So I don't feel like moving him around. Um, but I guarantee you it's the same mold. I guarantee this it's going to be the same size. Uh, I guarantee it's the same suit. So... Um, we don't necessarily need to do a comparison in that regards. I, I don't. I guess I just want to bring them over here to show you what it is that you're that you're getting. But uh, I, I, I like this pose. It's it's a definite Spider-Man pose, whether it's in the Marvel Cinematic Universe or any of the of the uh, comics or or however you know Spider-Man. This is a Spider-Man pose, it truthfully is, and that's why I went with it. placement of some of the pieces you can see here that they have to keep them nice and tidy. This was on his front, this was on his back. Here is figure stand. And just as we were discussing, so that's Spider-Man Homecoming. And that's Spider-Man Far From Home. So the two Spider-Man movies that he did, because his other appearances, Civil War, Infinity War, and Endgame, were not Spider-Man movies, but Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. So this is it's pretty interesting <clears throat> what they have here. It's like a picture of a, you know, a spider, and then the silhouette of a city. Don't I couldn't tell you specifically if that's New York or what city that really is. Maybe one of you guys can help me out there and tell me which city that is. I, I'm happy to have this stand. I, I kind of like these stands. This shape stand over the um, the new ones that they're giving us, uh, which are the six-sided ones. I, I kind of like these better. And, and the reason I like these better is... As you're stacking them in rows deep, you can stack them a little bit better than you can the six-sided one, and you have enough room in between, or you know, right side by side. And and these also, you can either do these, which I love this this post here is the one that you can actually put a full-on post into. This look so. I'm looking here. They've screwed this in, <clears throat> so if you want to, just put your little screwdriver in there and unscrew that, and then you can pop this off. And if you wanted to use just a two-prong crotch grabber, you could do that too. You don't have to use this specific pose, uh, post in here to support him. And as you see, I guarantee you, I've swapped this out. This is not the original post that came with it because... What they are using now are these much thinner ones that um, have a slide on them. So I literally did just as I was referring to and swapped out this P90 
piece here, this bottom piece, to be able to put in this thicker pole. And you can see here, it's taller and it's thicker. So this would be the height that the pole comes with. Is that too much light, guys? Am I washing this out? And I wasn't pleased with that. So I wanted to be able to get them up in the air in a nice height. And I wanted a more sturdier pole. So I swapped out this because this one only holds this pole. So I swapped it out, put this pole in there, and I'm good to go. So, and remember these, you just pull that off. Where this one, actually, unscrew this and then set it there and then tighten it down. Whereas on these, you can position this lobster claw any way up or down this that you desire. And the lobster claw is designed with lobster claws underneath the webbing. The lobster claw is designed with this little piece of rubber um, right here where the, the pole slides on it. You can see where I'm pointing to. This, this is a soft rubber which is designed to cause a friction and keep it from sliding when as you tighten this down. But it doesn't really necessarily hold as well as this does, which is specifically held in place um, by a gap that it has to fit into. It's, it's thicker here and tighter here, and that's specifically right there. But it's only this height. But I have multiple size poles over the years. You get some that are this tall, you get some that are, I mean, much taller. So I can just use whatever size pole I wanted to. Or if I wanted to use, the, they have the clear plastic ones and they had the metal black ones that were super shiny and I could slide them up and down on that and I could score them if I needed to to make them stay. So this was a clever design, but it doesn't necessarily hold the weight of a figure over a long period of time. Now, Spidey doesn't weigh much at all. So, I mean, he's very light. So it's not an issue of holding up, for instance, you know, the um, war machine or something to that effect, a die cast figure that you definitely aren't going to be able to do that with. But I definitely wanted to get him into um, a nice sturdy area that I didn't have to worry about him because I'm going to keep him upside down because that's how Spidey is. Have him kissing Mary Jane, right? What is my favorite Spider-Man hot toy? Well, I, I, I've never held in my hand, nor have I owned the black suit Spider-Man, the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, or the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. So I can't necessarily comment on those. I would love to have those because I am a huge Spider-Man fan. Huge. And, um, but I also uh, know that Hot Toys quality has increased over the years. They've gotten better at doing what they do. So currently my favorite Spider-Man suit, gosh, that's tough. Um, probably Scarlet Spider. Probably the Scarlet Spider. Only because of the decades of love that I've had for that character in the first place. So I'm a little uh, jaded in that regards. The black suit, Spider-Man, I'm sure is really cool too. Um, but we're talking about a figure that's probably, oh man, 10 or 15 years old. I don't even know how old it is. The black suit, Spider-Man from Spider-Man 3. Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man or the Andrew Garfield, or even the red and blue classic uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man suit. I don't know what condition those are even in over all these years. Um, I mean, you can't go wrong with this. This is our Spider-Man now. This is Spidey. This is, this is Peter Parker. This is who we have. And from my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I remember hearing or reading somewhere that Sony and Disney have come to an agreement and Spidey's back in the MCU where he belongs. He belongs there. Um, Sony has done a great job taking care of Spider-Man, I guess you could say, uh, over the decades that they've owned him. And I was really pleased to see Tobey Maguire do Spider-Man. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of Andrew Garfield, only because Tobey Maguire did such a great job 
in the first movie of Spider-Man. And it wasn't Toby's fault that the third movie failed. It was just... They, they've got so much story that they're trying to tell. You know what I mean? At that point, they had had 35 years or something like that of Spider-Man story to tell. And um, you know, they tried to condense it down into a two-hour movie. And, and it was just so difficult to do with an original an origination story. And, and I think they did a really good job with it. The only, thing I, the only problem I had ever with the uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man was how his fluid uh, actually came out of his, his body uh, instead of web shooters. And that is the difference between 616 Spider-Man and the Tobey Maguire universe Spider-Man. And because we've always known this, um, and because it was specifically brought to our attention in the Spider-Man multiverse movie... We know that Tobey Maguire Spider-Man is a real Spider-Man. We know that Andrew Garfield Spider-Man is a real Spider-Man. We know that Miguel O'Hara is a real Spider-Man. We know that Miles Morales is a real Spider-Man. These are all, you know, you can, you can love each one of these and not feel guilty about loving them because it's multiple universes. The MCU universe is, or Earth is, 1999... Nine nine, that's the MCU universe. So when I forget his name, Mysterio, I forget the character's name, was telling Nick Fury and Peter Parker about the alternate universes. I was like, "Oh, this is going to be great. We're going to divulge this, and he's going to tell us where he's from." When he said this, and he's talking about where, where. Tom Holland and Nick Fury, uh, Samuel Jackson, and all those the MCU is, he said, this is Earth-616. And I was sitting in the movie, and I was like, whoa, 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 time out, stop the press, that's wrong. And then, of course, we found out later that he was talking nonsense, and he had no idea what the hell he was talking about. And that's why he was wrong, because Earth-616 is the main... My understanding, the main comic line of, of um, all the all the main comics and the MCU, where Tom Holland and Mysterio and Nick Fury and all those were in existence for those movies, is Earth one nine 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 nine. So I was I was first was like shocked and angry and you know I was playing you know comic book guy. Yeah, actually, you know the Simpsons did it. Or, you know, whatever. So, um, and then when I found out later that he was talking nonsense, that he really wasn't from an alternate universe, he was really one of Tony's former employees, then that made sense why he would say that, because he didn't know what he was talking about. He was kind of guessing that there was an alternate universe. And actually, there is. As we know... And, well, Deadpool knows, and, well, Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy, Spider-Gwen know, right? Peter B. Parker, they know. spider Dwa. And, you know, when um, Game Boy came out, Pokemon, I was catching all the Pokemonsters. I was a Pokemon Master, Pokemon Master. Gotta catch them all. Iron Man suits come out, catching them all. Now the Spider Man suits are coming out. It's like a dream come true. Spider Man's my guy. Spider Man is my guy. Same suit. Um, gosh, I really do want to take him off here because I hate to say this, he looks skinnier. Oh, man. Oh man, oh man, oh man. I'm gonna have to take him down, guys, because he looks skinnier. He probably isn't. It's probably the exact same figure. I'm gonna take him down. I don't wanna have to take him down. Oh I think there's an upgrade on the Far From Home suit, the toe pivot. Do you watch the videos with posing with Peter for Mint in sealed box? Is there any color difference on the suits? Gosh dang it, guys. I'm taking him down. I don't want to take him down. Ugh. 
Taking him down. Taking you down. Oh my god, I discovered this YouTube video uh, two nights ago. <laughs> I am loving it. So, Rihanna was like one of my celebrity crushes when she came out with that um, Umbrella song. And um, then she did Shining Bright Like a Diamond. So, I discovered two nights ago this video that's old. I guess it's like six years old from a company, from a group called uh, Steam Powered Giraffe. Um, Diamonds. Rihanna's cover version of Diamonds. It's, I... I couldn't tell you how many times I've watched this thing now. Probably two dozen times. Blown away by these steam-powered giraffes. I'm going to take his hand off. I don't want to have to pull this through again. I was noticing enough difference here. I want to look at this. I see absolutely zero difference in color. And I am not colorblind at all. I can see all the colors. Um, Copyright stamp on this one says 2017. So homecoming says 2017 on the foot. And this one, very interesting. It's on the other foot. So This is very interesting. Okay. Um, all right. So on homecoming, normally what they do is they put on one side, they put like hot toys, and the other side they put like the uh, copyright date on there. So on this one we have on his left foot, there where it says 2017, and it, uh, there's something I've never seen before, that CPI or CPN. I really need my glasses to be able to read this specifically. It says copyright Marvel, copyright 2017, CPII possibly, on his left foot. And his right foot it says, copyright 2017, Hot Toys Limited. Like on the Iron Man, there's only just one that has a year on it. So these say 2017, okay, on both feet. On this one, the new one, it only has the year on one side. And it says 2019, and it's on the right foot. So for whatever reason, they decided to do that differently. So it's definitely not some that they had laying around, or they definitely changed that printing on the bottom of that. Okay, we have toe pivot, ankle pivot, the whole nine yards here on homecoming. Okay. And we have that here on the uh, movie promo edition too. So we have toe pivot. Ankle pivot, whole nine yards. Shine bright like a diamond. Steam powered giraffe, check it out. Diamonds. I got a kick out of it. I like the song in the first place. Like I said, Rihanna was my celebrity crush.
I see zero difference in the suit now. Same color, same texture, same material, same lining. I see no difference. None. Here's the head sculpt that came with the homecoming. And here's the head sculpt on the movie promo edition. Um Well, I'll tell you this. My head sculpt on my homecoming, the seam on it that goes over the back of his head. Let me show you this. Well, that wasn't supposed to come apart like that. So be careful with that. That'll go back on easily. I'm pretty sure it ain't supposed to come apart like that. I guarantee you that ain't supposed to happen. It appears that they didn't let the glue set before putting this together. Um, but sure, we'll make them easy to turn them into a scroll now, right? Which one did I open already? Last one you always check, right? No, nope. it isn't easier to turn them into a scroll with that. <laughs> Doesn't really go too well, does it? Um, this is the homecoming suit. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a bunch of material. Let me turn the lights off. Maybe the, these lights are washing them out. So I can show you this. You can see this little... Um, mm, what would I call it? Extra group of material right here causing this little extra group of material right here causing this little point. Right there. You see where my eye is? Right below my eye is a little point on the back of the head. Like a Deadpool point. All right? And the seam that travels from the, the, uh, the middle of the head all the way down the back is very pronounced. It's, the material is just really bunched up there. Okay? Now, I imagine this is from the, the hand assembly of this. On this one, it's very clean. The seam is still there, okay? But they did a good job putting it together. It's not a bunch of material bunched up. There's no little point at the top of the head, nice smooth head around the crowning of the head there. Whereas on the homecoming one, there's like a little Deadpool point. You see that? Got it pointed straight up. There's a little Deadpool point there. It shouldn't be there. There should be no Deadpool point. There you go. You can see that? The little black shadowing there. That's where all the material is bunched up on this head sculpt. Now, I don't know if any of you others have experienced that on yours. It'd be something to look into to see if you have that additional material all mucked up there. If the person that was putting these together just was not doing a very good job of it, or they didn't, didn't cut the, the, uh, the material properly, and we're just left with a bunch of extra material and they just turn it into that. But it's cleaner on 
the new, improved, and broken Spider-Man head sculpt. And, of course, I'll be able to fix that. You know, you don't own Hot Toys figures without owning super glue and what not. So, that's what happens in the owned of these figures. Now, I am curious as to whether or not we get the same amount of eyes. Okay, so what we have with the movie promo edition, and I know this because here's the top of it, three interchangeables, so four sets of eyes. Let's get the little drawer out for Spider-Man Homecoming. Let's see how many eyes he comes with. Because if I remember correctly, he comes with the uh, kill eyes, all right? All right, I'm just going to dump this out. So here's that. And the other one I just put right back in his little drawer here. Right there. So this is the other drawer for Spider-Man Homecoming. A little Science Today book. With just like one page throughout the whole thing. A little handheld uh, face mask which doesn't come with the new one. His hands. Headphones. Web shooters. And sets of eyes. So he only comes with three extra sets of eyes. The death eyes. Big eyes. Medium eyes. Small eyes. So now let's compare that with what we have here. We don't get death eyes. We have different eyes. Totally. Totally different eyes. Alright. So let's get these set aside. When we were talking about this last week or whatever. Um, in comparison to all the eyes that were on the other Spideys. So we have the same thing going on here. Different eyes. With these two Spider-Men. I'm going to... Last time I predicted that they would be interchangeable with the other Spideys, and we found out that for the most part they were not. I'm going to predict this time that they are, these two, interchangeable. Um, I, we can find out that they are not, but at, right now I'm going to predict that they will be. So this is movie promo edition, Homecoming, Homecoming Eyes. And right now I'm telling you there are different sizes. And I don't know how important this is to you. Um, but if they're interchangeable, that totally, totally opens up the amount of eyes that you can do with Spidey. All right. Let's take the eyes out of here as well. They are the number two open eyes. So the eyes on the head sculpt are not the widest open that come with the movie promo, but the second widest open. If you can see here. Let's get this closer. Yeah. 
Okay, that's lit that up. I can now no longer see the screen. And I got serious lag over on the live feed for the video. The chat's coming through, so I can see your, your guys' chat. Um, this suit is two years old. It's been in my collection for two years, and I think he's held up perfectly well. Um, but one of the things that they like to tell us, so now these are the widest opens on the homecoming. The eyes that are in it are the widest open. I know I haven't swapped them out. So they are the widest for that specific figure. I know they had a huge problem with the first release of Deadpools when they came out with those, and that's one of the re one of the two reasons why I didn't get my Deadpool for like six months. First off, because being a sideshow purchaser on that product takes forever a day, or or a Big Bad Toy Store. I don't remember where I got that from. I think I may have bought it from Big Bad Toy Store, but it takes forever a day. Coming from that. Jeez. All right. So we get the same amount of eyes. Okay. Um, I'm going to say these are the same size. It's hard to say. They appear to be the same size here. Those appear to be the same size. Those appear to be the same size. And here's your difference. So on this one you have kill mode. and this one you have very squinty. So that's where what you have. And I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say that these will fit in here. So this is the movie promo in Homecoming. Had uh, easily went right in there. And this is Homecoming going into movie promo head. Same thing. Straight up flush right into it. So you don't get the squinty eyes with the homecoming, and you don't get the kill eyes with the movie promo edition. He didn't access the kill mode in Far From Home. He did access it when he was in Endgame in his Iron Spider suit, if I remember correctly, didn't he? Did he have the Iron Spider suit then? And he was carrying the Infinity Gauntlet? Pretty sure he did. So I'm going to put these back just as they were with these um, number two open eyes into the movie promo edition head sculpt because that's how they came. Easy enough. A little difficult to get out. I, I used the knife. Um, I don't see a magnet in here. Magnets came with the Deadpool figures to take eyes out. And it was the widest open ones on the homecoming suit. So that's the difference there. These are also from the Homecoming suit. The wings, we get those with the movie promo edition. I'll show you in just a quick second. Let's get these eyes back in here where they belong. So we don't get these accessories confused. And this will be his new little box right here. Let's go ahead and put his little eyes in here while we're at it. Shine bright like a diamond. 
Steam Powered Giraffe. Check it out, man. I got a good kick out of it. I really enjoyed it. I'm surprised to hear him sing that song uh, as well as he did. In a unique manner, also. So we get the web wings, which are important. Spidey's been having his web wings from, I mean, day one of, his, of the comics. And see, the other reason I wanted five of these guys is because there's so much differences in being able to display him. Web wings, um, with the head sculpt, without the head sculpt, with his yellow jacket, with his... Um, he had a hoodie on, I think, at one point. I mean, there's so many different ways of displaying Spidey from the five movies that he's been in, so I wanted to have the multiple figures to, in order to be able to do that. So that's why I was buying these, because I want to be able to put him into his school coat. I want to be able to put him in there with his headset on. I want to be able to put him with his web wings flying through the air. I want to display him in all these different manners. We get the traditional... Um, it's the exact same webbing that they've been pumping out forever. We talked about the new, what I call the Todd McFarlane webbing that came out on, um, what was it, the Advanced Suit Spider-Man? I forget now. And I think Spider-Punk came with it as well. But not with this one. Just the regular, traditional style webbing. I'm getting all the hands out here. Looks like the same hands. No extra accessories, just the basic accessories that you need. So no coffee cups, no headsets, no coats. I've, I've seen a third-party manufacturer of selling the coats if you wanted to do the school coats. So if you wanted to buy this, you could you could add to it the school coats, get the little backpacks that came with the uh, Homecoming Edition Spider-Man. Um, get this off. Two weeks, I will finally have my first Hot Toys advanced suit specifically. Can't wait. I like that. It's a cool one. Uh, how do you think the suit will hold up over a period of time? It's hard to say. Uh, with the, you know, the Civil War setup. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Um, the head coming off like that is bad. I agree. By the way, I apologize for mistakes. I am learning English. Well, you're doing a hell of a good job of it. And I like listening to people who speak English to learn more. Well, I hope that my English is well enough that you... Um, Learn from it. I hope I don't sound too much like a hick. Uh, if you have a crush on Rihanna, you need to watch a film called Valorian. She plays a shapeshifter and does an amazing dance scene. Oh, Spider-Man's a scroll. Spider-Man's a scroll. Yeah, man, um, Rihanna is my celebrity crush. I don't know if that's still the case anymore. Before Rihanna, my celebrity crush was Angelina Jolie. I had to dump her for Rihanna. I don't know who my celebrity crush is uh, now. Probably not Rihanna anymore. So we have what I call, really, I call them the Spider-Man hands. We have two of these. And, and, and what it is, is, is it's how he would pose himself, you know, with his little sticky fingers um, hanging onto the walls or crouched down. There really is no other character that necessarily does their fingers like this. You know what I mean? It's Spider-Man specific. As far as I'm concerned, uh, a pose. We have we have two of those, which are cr crucial in being able to pose him uh, against the wall or crouched or or hanging anywhere where he's up against and using his fingers to hold on to things. He's going to put his hands in this pose. We have two fists here. Both of them have the holes to be able to hold webbing. Let's get these lights back here. We have a left fist and a right fist, and both of them have a hole in them to be able to hold the webbing. And um, you really need to be careful with this webbing. This is the one that you can slide through there. And what they tell you to do is to push it through to a point and then grab the bottom and pull it through the rest of the way. I have snapped this little bottom portion off, pulling it through. So my advice to you, actually, is, I don't know, finding some... Thing, some skewer, toothpick, something to slide in and out of here to widen this before attempting to push this all the way through. Okay, and that's why I also did not want to have to mess with this 
once I got it through, I, I don't want to play with it. Uh, when you get this in there, you're pretty much done. You don't want to keep yanking it in and out. Put it in there, leave it. So uh, make your decision wise on this. If that's the one you decide you want to pose on it, um, because they also have that other webbing now that they've come out with, which I'm referring to as the Todd's, Todd McFarlane webbing. It has like a loop that goes around the hand, and it works the same way. But they still include this when they have that. But if you decide to use that, be very careful with it. Like I said, I've broken this. And, and if they tell you to push it through a little bit and then pull it out, the, pull it through the rest of the way once it gets out a little bit. Because if you keep pushing on it, you'll break these too. These are very fragile. They easily break. They bend and break very easily. So be very mindful of these when posing your figures about. We get the two blobs, if you will, as they're coming out, the web shooting out, and these will stick into the web shooters. As such, there's a little um, angle on it, okay? So it has like this little notch. I don't know if you can see that or not. That uh, you put the notch goes the, the 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 notch goes so that it appears to be shooting out of that. So with that down and the web shooter in such position, okay, and that in that position, you just stick it in the hole, and it gives the appearance of coming out of the web shooter as such. And then you also get two of these, and I really don't know how best to pose these. Um, and, and that's the truth. They don't connect to the others. It's not like you can um, make it longer here. It doesn't snap on. I suppose maybe if you wanted to glue it, but it just wouldn't look right because there's no knotting on it. But I, I don't know what the purpose of this is. I suppose maybe one of you creative guys are able to, to, to tell me how best to do this. But you can put this on it. Okay. So you can do that. You can also put this on the, the little, this one, as I've done with this. Make it like as if he's hanging from the ceiling, and that's how I have it displayed, or I will have it displayed again when I put him back up there. But I don't know quite what these are supposed to represent. They, they're like coming to and going to something, maybe off, off screen, more or less. I, I really couldn't tell you. I, I wish that there was a way of making them like extenders, where you could attach it to these others, just have this really long webbing, but they didn't design it as such. So I don't quite know what to do with it. I really don't. But you get two of those. You get the I love you web shooters. Two of those. And then we get to what I call the grasping hands, holding donut, coffee, pizza, cell phone hands, whatever. Two extra pins, and that is it. That is the complete movie promo edition Spider-Man. It just gives you what you need in order to be able to have a Spider-Man or to have multiple Spider-Men or to be able to use all the extra goodies that came with Spider-Man Homecoming that you couldn't necessarily do because you would have them as I have, posed as Spider-Man. So there you have it. That is Spidey, the movie promo edition Spider-Man. Push and pull the web at the same time. Push and pull. Uh, okay, I see. That makes sense. Thank you, Noble. Uh, watch YouTube videos posing with Peter, how he's got his Spider-Man. You will love it. Uses cling film as webbing. Oh, interesting. I'll have to check that out. Thank you very much. That's a good lead. So, um, like I said, I'm a huge Spider-Man nut. I'm really pleased that this head looks better. And it's funny. 
I never had displayed this head, so I didn't notice the little uh, imperfection in that. Now seeing this beautifully crafted head, this one kind of pisses me off. Now this one pisses me off because it came apart, but this one pisses me off because of all this extra material here that's mucked about. But, I mean, I've got my Tom Holland over here, so the beautiful one is going to be over here. See how this goes. I'm bright like a diamond. I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch that video probably another 12 times. And it's a six-year-old video. Steam-powered giraffe. Diamonds. Rihanna cover. Love it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, have to pull this out because, as you've seen, it was all hanging all out. Place this in and then shove it back down around it, looking at this. This uh, black um, insert is different than it is on Homecoming, by the way. So that is, so far, the only discernible difference that I see for that. Let me examine this carefully while I perform surgery on my Spider-Man figure. This just isn't worth doing a return on in that regards. You know what I mean? This is minor. Um, I've returned uh, an R5-D4 to Sideshow because it had a bad motivator. And that just sounds so damn funny. The motivator wouldn't pop properly. You pull this little eyeball out, it's supposed to pop up. It would sometimes. And I contacted Sideshow and I said, my R5-D4 has a bad motivator. They didn't respond back. And I said, I'm not joking. It's broken. I need a new one. And so they did send me one eventually. But it's like as if they thought I was being a smart aleck or something. I was like, no, it's it's broken. Then I had, I think, uh, my Whiplash 2. I think there was a helmet issue on that. Uh, I sent that back. Uh, my Mark 7 Stealth had the base problem. And Sideshow told me to go get bent. It wouldn't fix that. So I have the bad base and hole on my chocolate. My Mark 7 Stealth. There's another one I had problems with. I think one of my Mark 7s, the arm went bad on it. But I, that, I did not buy that brand new from Sideshow, so that was outside of warranty. The lights wouldn't light up. There's another one I think I had a helmet issue on. But I'm not going to return this Spider-Man head sculpt. You're welcome to if you experience the same problem. It's just not worth the hassle for me. I'm just going to uh, repair it. Shove it in here and consider it done. Because this goes... Around it after it's in there and all the way. By the way, speaking of R5-D4, I see Hot Toys R2-D2 is out now. I'm excited about that. Super stoked. Juiced from Jazz Inc. has been shipping his T-34, his um, 
what do they call them? Land speeders. T34 is the lights. The X-wing, right? He's shipping his land speeders. If I have it next week, we will be doing the land speeder. I think I've also got a red Sonya coming. So whichever comes first will be the one that I will do. Um, my red Sonya, I'm going to convert over to Mary Jane. My Mary Jane has red hair. So her name is Mary Jane. That's my Mary Jane. The Mary Jane that we've known for 50 years plus, right? Face the Tiger, you've hit the jackpot. MJ is not my Mary Jane. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Not to piss any of y'all off. But uh, that's not my Mary Jane. Nice and assembled properly the way it's supposed to be. The uh, the rubber glue is still on the, the little felt piece. So it fit perfectly in there. I'll put his little head back on. And over time, I imagine that will be the case. Um, the head's not coming off. I'm not going to be interchanging that head. Swap out the eyes, maybe. But no, I won't be interchanging the head. So this one I might end up putting the coat on or something. Uh, they are... And here are the other accessories that we got with Homecoming Spider-Man. This is the other... Um, webbing that I was talking about. And I call it, like I said, I refer to it as the Todd McFarling webbing because I like to attribute Todd with being the one that really kind of created this uh, effect of this uncontrolled webbing that just goes everywhere as Spidey swings about. Everyone else, just we just kind of ignored it. We know it dissolves after a period of time. I think it's two hours is what web, his webbing dissolves on. And we never paid any mind to it, but Todd's got like this Webbing just totally out of control. So this is another way, and, and you see it, it doesn't connect all the way through. You stick it to the bottom and the top of those fists, and you can you can put that, and you can put it on any of them. But so far, I think it only come, has come with two figures. I'm pretty sure it came with the Spider-Punk, and it came with the Advanced Suit Spider-Man, if I remember correctly. So far, it's the only ones that it has come with. And these are what came with the Homecoming. If I remember correctly, there was two versions of the Homecoming you could buy. You didn't have to buy these if you didn't want them. You would, you could just get them without these extra pieces. But I bought them. Uh, I mean, I ordered the piece. I ordered the Spider-Man that came with them. So I'm probably going to put this coat on him. And I need to reference the movie or images to see. I don't remember where the hoodie goes, where the coat goes. I don't remember how that works together, but uh, this is the the coat. I think I'm gonna put him put him with the coat on, and, and I'm gonna give him the the little headphone as well. I'll just plop it right over his head here. Give him his coat and his science book. So I'm gonna make him the premier edition. If that makes any sense, right? That's my intent. <sighs> That's correct. And Big Bad Toy Store will too. It sure will. Four months after you got it and they still replaced it. Wow. I think the policy is 30 days. So they were really being generous with you. Um, I think it's within 30 days. And by the way, they only do it with the original purchaser. So keep in mind, if you've bought it from eBay or from somebody else, Nine times out of ten, they won't honor a warranty issue. Yeah, and depending on what they say, they may tell you to destroy it, they may tell you to send it back, they may just send one to you. Uh, they'll give you many options depending on what their requirement is. 
And I think also probably another reason where they only do like for a period of time, because once they're out of extra parts or whatever, that's it. If they don't have the parts to it and can't get the parts for it because of the limited edition run on the figures, you're out of it. You're out of luck. Uh, you just can't get it replaced or repaired or whatever. Now they might do a refund for you at that point, but then you end up losing out on a figure. So um, the sooner that you get your figures opened and examined and make sure that they're complete and total and there and whatever else, then um, the better off you're going to be should you have to have a file a claim with the other side or Big Bad Toy Store or whomever it is that you buy it from. And like I said, Big Bad Toy Store as well, they've, they've taken care of me as, as far as that goes as well. But um, you'll learn over time to repair your figures as it is. Unless it's like an electrical thing. I'm definitely sending back an electrical thing, but... Most of the time, I'm able to fix most problems on them as it is. Yeah, the land speeder. My goodness, I'm really stoked about that. I'm really excited about getting that land speeder. I, it, the land speeder was one of those things when I first seen the movie, when the first movie came out back in 1977, and I was in sixth grade, and... Uh, how old I am, the, uh, oh, what a magical point that was. That land speeder was so freaking cool. And literally, the scene that I remember so vividly is when they go into Tatooine, into the um, the city, I forget the name of the, the city, where they meet up in the cantina, and uh, the stormtroopers stop them. And they said, how long have you had these droids? And he's like, oh, a couple of seasons. And Obi-Wan's like, these are not the droids you're looking for. And that was the first time we've seen the power of the Force in regards to being able to control the weak-minded. And they didn't explain all that to us at the time as to how that was going. We didn't know that the Stormtroopers were clones and that that was not necessarily why they were weak-minded and whatever else, and yada yada. But the story was there. Lucas knew the story. And it was just being unfolded to us as time progressed. But it was just so cool. And, and that's the scene that I, that's so vivid in my mind is, you know, Obi-Wan sitting there, you know, you don't need to see his papers. He can go now. Or whatever, you know, whatever it was that he said. And, and uh, so that's what I, I, I intend to do with that land speeder. And I, I watched uh, Juiced uh, unbox one of them. And that's literally going to be the, the scene is, is uh, to set that up. And I'm, oh, man, I'm so excited about that. I really am. That's, uh, I think that's going to be my big piece. You know, not counting my Hulkbuster, which I'm probably going to sell. But um, that'll be my big piece. I think the land speeder was like three hundred ninety nine dollars, which is cheaper than what I've paid for some of these Iron Man figures. So I couldn't I couldn't see for one second how that was a a, a no go, as far as I'm concerned. That was like a definite yes in in every aspect of the word. As soon as I seen that, I was like, oh, this is a, a complete and total yes buy on this. So. Moss Isley, thank you. Moss Isley. Give me 50 lashes for not knowing that. Moss Isley Spaceport. Some of the most villain, what was it? Scum. Villainous scum. Vile scum in the universe we'll find there. I forget what he said. Watch your step or something. Be careful. Moss Isley Spaceport. I'm bright like a diamond. Check it out, Steam Power Draft. Enjoyed their concept, the way that they did the the uh, the video. It was really cool what they were trying to achieve. The guys uh, evidently pretending to be a um, steam powered robot from like eighteen nineties, like steampunk is what he is intending to be. So it's like as if you're watching an animatronic sing the song. So in his movements, it's very clever. Uh, he artistically performs those. And that's kind of what I was really digging in regards to that. Let's see if we can get Peter back into his pose. It really takes um, some creativity to get him into this. I think this is the fourth time I've put him back into this pose. I don't even remember. I don't like don't like having to put him back into this. It's such 
it's such finagling to get it just perfect. But I really, it's it's the classic iconic Spider-Man pose. You know, I've got the uh, Iron Spider in the classic iconic Spider-Man pose as well. If you can't if you can't pose your Spidey about, there's a problem. If you can't put Spider-Man into some contorted position, if you can't put him to a way where his knees are up by his ears, there's a problem. You know, when you look at the, some of the comics, how Spider-Man is just totally his arms are just and legs are flailing about. Like, how in the world is he even in that pose in the first place? You know, I, I want to be able to do that with my Hot Toy figure. I want to be able to put him into these poses that I've seen in the comics for all of these years. I should be able to, right? Beautiful like diamonds in the sky. I too I So by the way, a couple of you reached out to me and asking for some prices on figures and I responded and nobody decided beyond that, except for the Mark 47 to move on any of those. And I'm getting the prices from eBay. Um, the one that I didn't have the ability to get a price off eBay from was my Mark 35 Heartbreaker because if you guys have been following me for long enough, you know that I totally customized that. And so I can't possibly imagine selling it for the price that you could buy just a regular Mark 35 Red Snapper. Did I say Mark 35 Heartbreaker? Mark 35 Red Snapper. Um, I replaced the plastic non-functioning I replaced the plastic uh, pistons with metal pistons and they move and his waist rotates as well. So how did I have this? But, all these figures are for sale. I have no intention of selling them all. I'm just trying to get enough to keep from going to collections for doctor's bills for my wife. And once we get all that taken care of, and I'm in a better financial position again, I will be replenishing my collection. So this is just a temporary setback. Life. It happens, right? So. And it's funny because I've always said, oh, yeah, I would sell these. They're an investment. And then I would say, I'll never sell these. You know, I'm going to will them to my daughter. She has no interest in this, you know. She, she was on one of the shows. You guys met her. And uh, she has no interest in this. That's fine. I do. I enjoy it. I really have a blast with these. And uh, when I'm dead, hey, do whatever you want with them, right? If you have no interest in them, take William. I ain't going to hurt my feeling. Turn around and sell them. Hopefully you'll make, some, make a few bucks off of them. Right? She, if she wants to keep and maybe maybe she'll have some kids by that point who will be like no mom we're not selling spider man you can't sell spidey you can't sell tony don't get rid of my black widow all right i think i'm about pleased with this no i'm not
So the guy sings the song musically very well. But the, uh, oh no, this thing just broke! The kooky part, though, is him acting like a robot. Gosh dang it, I just broke this thing. So much for super glue, right? I'm going to be super gluing the snot out of this. Sheesh. Gosh dang it. Gosh dang it! What was that, the... Bachelor Party? The Bachelor, what was it? The movie with Zach Galifianakis where they went to Vegas. He wouldn't curse. Gosh dang it! Gosh darn it! Con sarn it! Dag nab it! Dang it! So, speaking of holding up, it's not the figure, it's the doggone webbing. Gosh dang dark narbit webbing. But the good thing is that comes with every one of these. I have here multiples of that. Six of them here, seven of them, six. But I'll glue it. And it will be functioning again. I can't get him exactly how I want him. How do I want him? I knew I didn't want to take this guy out of here. Because there's no such thing as a natural pose for this. This isn't anything that any of us are going to naturally do. But it's natural to Spider-Man. And it should look proper. It should look as natural as an unnatural pose is going to look. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense whatsoever. I think I've about got it now. I think this works. All right. So let's angle this up here a bit so you can see what we've done if you stuck with me. See in there a little bit. So that's looking at him straight on. Okay. And when we turn him sideways, let's see how he is. And such. And I think that works. It's as it's about as natural as you can get for such a an, an unnatural pose. And so when you're just looking at him in the collection. It'll be as such. With a non-broken webbing. And if you had like a Detoff, you know, you would just put that up at the top there. But you see right there? It just snapped. You gotta be careful with these. They are very fragile. I will glue it back. Brand new one. You can see where it broke at right there at the, the very top. The very top of it. So let's see what else have we got. I guess that's about it. I've made no progress whatsoever on my Peter B. Parker that I was building. I'm going to buy that young rich toys. Peter B. Parker, I, uh, I think he comes out next year sometime, $17 security deposit for, I don't know, I think it's 200 bucks for the figure. 
Um, well worth it as far as I'm concerned. And I I I ordered the Miss Stacy, the Gwen, Spider Gwen. Always had a crush on Spider Gwen. Always thought she was sexy, sexy, and a very clever figure. So I've got that all, uh, order again. I think it was like seventeen dollars, uh, one six kit, and um, one six outfitter are selling those. Where I get those from? Um, Gwen Stacy is made by. Follow Miss Stacy. She is made by. Posing with Peter Mitten sealed box. Who's that? My Iron Spider. Let me get my Iron Spider and I'll show you. In what I consider a classic Iron Spider pose. It's also a classic Spider-Man pose, too. And I've done it with both of my Iron Spiders. I bought the uh, the re-edit Sentinel Iron Spider first. And then when the Iron Spider came out, I, I bought that as well. Um, because the, uh, the re-edit Sentinel Iron Spider is a little more comic-y to the, um, what was it? Ultimate Spider-Man, I think, when the, the Iron Spider first came out. Uh, let's see. Miss Stacy is made by Bullet Head, the same people that made Venom over here. And they've got a Mantis that's coming out. So I'll show you. I'll show you the poses that I have. I have my um, advanced suit, my Spider Punk, and my Scarlet Spider just standing there. I have my homemade Spidey posed as such, just crouched. On his knees, as such. But my advanced suit, my Scarlet Spider, and my uh, Spider Punk are just standing, just as uh, the movie promo is. Like this, this boring pose. And I'll show you my Iron Spider and my re edit, Sentinel re edit Iron Spider. And bright like a diamond. I would call this the classic Iron Spider pose. Right there. And I've done the same thing with the re edit. Which is also 1 6 scale, but he's not necessarily because he's a. Um, See, these guys, they, I suppose the way I would term this is uh, they reimagine the character, per se, if that's even a description. So similar body positioning, the two iron spiders here, um, but the arms are a little more alive, if you will. I don't remember if this webbing came with the re-edit Spider-Man. I don't remember. Um, I think I just shoved it in there. I don't. I think that's from a, one of the Hot Toys. Spider-Man webbing, but that's what I've done with this one because this one is a much more comic-like in, in that regards to the uh, the real Iron Spider. But this is definitely the MCU Spider-Man, and um, this is kind of an Iron Spider pose. So this pose of the figure is what I was going for, and um, that's how I've done it.
I'd like to have two of these. These iron spiders. I'd like to pose one as the iron spider and pose one as the suit. So this is another one that I wish I had multiples of. My bullethead Venom was not without problems when he came. So I could get the head sculpt of the bullethead Miss Stacy, the Gwen Gwen Stacy. It's not a very pretty attractive head sculpt. But I probably won't be displaying the head sculpt. I only ordered one. And I'll probably just keep her with her Spider-Man helmet on. The suits are totally identical between the movie promo edition and the uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. That's correct. They're absolutely identical. No difference whatsoever. None. The only difference that I noted was the head. Uh, and the, the, the new head is was nicer put together. And I ha don't think that has anything to do with design. I think that this has to do with the construction at the time of the person who was putting those together that day. Uh, that the, they are no difference whatsoever in the suits. It's just a matter of the homecoming coming with all the extra pieces, the head sculpt, the the kill eyes, um, and then you could buy the book and the, the coat and um, headphones and the the the, the jacket and um, I think that's it, uh, the backpack, and the movie promo edition does not come with any of that. Nor does it come with a head sculpt. And it doesn't come with the kill eyes, but it comes with squinted eyes. So those are your differences. I did pre-order the negative suit. Uh, I don't think it cost me anything to pre-order that. I don't remember. Homemade dice. Yeah, and the, there's the difference between the original homemade suit, by the way, and the... Homemade suit from Far From Home, again, is this homemade suit comes with a Tom Holland sculpt battle damaged. And that's the only battle damaged Tom Holland that you'll get. Um, the new homemade suit does not come with the battle damaged head sculpt. The new homemade suit comes with the battle drone. And it comes with like this uh, electric web shooting thing going on too, a plasma or something, some type of web shooter that's different in it. So um, both of them are a little different in that regards. Whereas this suit, you don't get the stuff, but it's still the basic suit. So this suit comes with all the stuff. This suit does not come with all the stuff. These two, the homemade original from Spider-Man Homecoming and the homemade from Spider-Man Far From Home, they come with different stuff. So it comes with, the new one comes with all the stuff that this one comes with, except for the Battle Damage Tom Holland. This one did not come with, obviously, because it wasn't out, the Battle Drone or like these, um, whatever it is, some sort of like electrically charged spider webbing that's coming out. So you get two things with the new Homecoming, excuse me, the homemade suit, far from home, you get the Battle Drone and and you get the, uh, the additional webbing, but you don't get the head sculpt. There's no head sculpt that comes with it. Just this. So if you want a Tom Holland, you get this one, and you get it's a battle damage version, and the only battle damage version of Tom Holland, if that's important to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, looking at uh, this guy... I've noticed some wrinkles and whatnot in them. But, you know, it's kind of like when I customize a figure. It's for me. I really have no intention of ever selling any of these. That's the God's honest truth. I'm not even kidding myself when I talk about how much they're, they're worth or whatever. And, and I'm not selling them now because I'm trying to turn a buck. For real, I'm telling you guys, I've absolutely been put into dire straits. My wife spent some time in the hospital, she died, and they resuscitated her, they brought her back, she was without oxygen between 10 and 20 minutes to her brains, there was no heartbeat, there was no brain activity, she was gone. Uh, they brought her back, she spent two months in different hospitals, and uh, 
insurance only covers so much. So now that money is coming through. And I worked really hard to be in a position in my life to be able to go buy a brand new Mercedes as I did last year. And I have fully intend on being able to maintain that type of a credit rating that I could go buy a new Mercedes if I want to again in a year. And if I don't pay these doctor bills, I'm going to destroy my credit. And that stays with you for seven years. And I don't have any intention of doing that. And that's why I'm having to sell these figures right now, because I've, I've lived beyond my means. I've, I've spent every penny that I get on these figures. And um, I, I, I never really thought for one second that I was going to get thrown into this. I didn't expect life to happen. You know what I mean? It happens to every one of us. We're all going to die. I hate to tell you this. In case you didn't know it already, you're going to die. You're dying right now. Your cells are decaying. You're getting older, and you're not as healthy as you were five seconds ago. I hate to tell you. You're getting older, and you're dying. Your cells are decaying. And um, it's going to happen to all of us. And we can only prepare for it as much as we possibly can. You know what I mean? And when it happens... You can't. I, it's hard to say that you could ever possibly truthfully be prepared for it. I'm sure there are people who are totally, truthfully, totally prepared for it. We were not, and uh, didn't expect it at all. My wife has has had some health issues over the last few years, but certainly didn't expect her to go through all of this. And I, I didn't have enough foresight or give a damn, if I guess, if you will, to think that I needed to be prepared for something of this caliber to come upon me. So, I, you know, I, I'm so in love and addicted with my figures that I'm still buying new figures as it is. Well, I told you I've, I had to cancel the, um, I, I didn't take delivery of my Bucky and my um, Champion Pool. The Champion Pool is neither here nor there. The, um, I, and I was still in denial. You know, I, I still paid for all these others that are coming in, the Red Sonya and the Land Speeder and all these. I paid for them uh, months ago. And, um, you know, I didn't think for one second that I was going to get hit with this huge bill for all of this. And they don't joke. They, they don't give you months to pay for it. I mean, you got 30 days to pay these bills or it goes into a uh, collection. It goes into arrears and it totally strikes your um, your credit report. And I don't give a damn what anybody says. But, oh, you can have a little note put on yours telling you that it's medical bills and this is in fact... Bullshit. Go try to buy a Mercedes with that on there, okay? That's all I'm saying. So, like I said, I work really hard to get into the, the position I'm in to be able to do that. And uh, I, I have no intention of screwing that up. So that's why I'm doing what I am. And I'm not asking for charity. I'll take charity. You know, that's why I have such a hard time asking for Patreon subscribers. And I'm so thankful for my Patreon subscribers. I really am. Because I'm not destitute, I'm not in a bad position, but having a YouTube channel, and I've, and I've gotten down to the point where I just do just the bare basics on the YouTube channel, just doing these live videos, I, I keep wanting to so badly, I still want to go back into producing the videos, and that requires so much stuff, lighting and cameras, and I have all that stuff, but it's just the hours and the work and all that involved, and that's why I have such a hard time you know, asking for assistance, because I, I, I'm not in a, a, a bad place. I, I think I'm, 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 I'm okay. But just as, as anyone, I spend whatever I get coming in, you know. So that's why I'm selling the figures. And I have every intention of replacing them in a year or two whenever I'm back on my feet and everything's settled uh, down. So that's the truth. That's what's going on with me. I'm not going to be like some of these guys that are all like, Oh, I'm so destitute. i got to go move in back with my mom. Here I am going and seeing Marvel Avengers in game for a 752nd time, but I don't have any money to pay my rent. But now I've paid to go see Marvel in game 752 times. Give me a freaking break. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I, I really am in trouble. Trouble. So, when I'm telling you these things, I I'm, guess I am looking for pity, but I'm not necessarily saying, for instance, some of you may be old enough to remember uh, a musical performer named MC Hammer. It made big news when he had to file bankruptcy. And he was telling Oprah, I think it was Oprah he was talking to when they were talking about his bankruptcy. And he says, yeah, I'm, I'm filing bankruptcy. I'm losing my house, he says. But I'm not like broke, like what some people can associate with being broke. You know what I mean? 
So I've still got food on the table, still got a roof over my head, still got gas in the cars. I just need to do this so that I can maintain that, if that makes any sense. I have the means to be able to generate that income by selling these figures that I absolutely love and don't want to sell, and that's why I'm selling them. So if that makes any sense whatsoever. So I thank you for your guys' time. I love every one of you. I really do. Uh, let's see. Do you see the regular Tom Holland head for Kit Bash figures? Yeah, I, I have seen those, and uh, I think they did a pretty good job with it. I don't own one, and that's what I said. Uh, I've, I've not seen a single battle damage Tom Holland head sculpt. Um, so there's lots of head sculpts out there. If you want a head sculpt for the movie promo edition or for your, uh, your homemade or, or whatever you're doing in that regards, there's lots of them out there. But the only battle damage one that I've seen is right here on this homemade suit. If that's important to you. If it's not, you can buy a Tom Holland suit all day long from uh, third-party suppliers. But I have yet to see a battle-damaged one. I'm not saying there is one out there. There may be one that I just haven't seen. Um, but I've not seen one yet. Uh, everybody's still a horrible experience to lose them. It surely is. And... Sh and uh, you know, I, I absolutely, you know, I'm not kidding you. I lost it at the hospital. Lost it. Literally. <sighs> Pulled into the parking lot. She was still breathing. She was, uh, the last words she was saying was, no, 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 no. And uh, pulled into the emergency room parking lot in the Mercedes. We were out grocery shopping. She said she couldn't breathe. She said, have some difficulty. She said, just take her, take her home. And I was like, well, you probably need to go to the hospital. She goes, no, just take me home. So start heading to the house and get on the interstate. And she says, no, I need to go to the hospital. So drove her to the hospital, you know, and she's, and uh, she kept saying, no, 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 no. That's all she was saying. And we got her to the emergency room uh, parking lot. And she passed in the, car, in the car. And so the uh, emergency room people are there. They open in the car door. It's a four-door car. And uh, my wife's got some, uh, she's a big girl. And uh, they couldn't get her out of the car. Out of the car easily. And. Uh, when the uh, you know, the nurses were there, when the doctor came out, they asked the condition of her. The nurse said, no pulse, no breathing, no heartbeat. That's when I just absolutely lost myself. I just, that was it. I collapsed. So I don't, I didn't see them remove her from the car. I don't know how they got her out of the car. And they had to take me to a, a room where I just wept. And I was in there probably an hour before they came to me. And uh, the doctor asked me what time I pulled into the parking lot. I said about 6.30 at night. It was about 6.30. When I pulled into the parking lot, and the doctor said, well, from our best guesstimate, she was without a heartbeat, without any oxygen to her brain for between 10 to 20 minutes. We resuscitated her. We have her on uh, life support. We have a, uh, a, a, uh, we intubated her so she can breathe. You know, she's not responding to anything. We're going to induce into her a medically induced coma to see if we can get her to Return, but we want to caution you," he says. She says, uh, "When your brain goes that long without oxygen, there's a high probability of permanent brain damage." So imagine that's what it was like uh, when all that happened, and uh, that's what I've been dealing with. That's what she's been dealing with, and um, she's recovered immensely. 90% of people who have a cardiac arrest do not come back to life. 90% of them, that's it. When they have the cardiac arrest, when they have that uh, 
which is different than a heart attack. When they have a cardiac arrest, it, it's it. That's the end of their days. There's no second chance. So she beat that odds in the first place. She was part of the 10% that survived. And uh, then, of course, you know, over the time, she started rewiring everything. It's the only way I can imagine it. It was like watching a child, um, a little baby, discover things and learn over again. And uh, she seems to be there for the most part. Uh, there's uh, I noticed, only because I've been with her for many years, I noticed some uh, differences. She's a little weak. She needs assistance walking. Um, she's not able to sleep well. And it's been it's really rough on her. She's really working really hard to try to get better again. But the what little brain damage, if any, that there is is negligible, if if even noticeable. I noticed some differences, but they're certainly not worth stressing over or or discussing with her, uh, and stressing her out. She doesn't like talking about it. She doesn't like being reminded about it. She wants to just you know live her life. And so that's where we are. And that's what's going on. And that's why I'm in the position that I'm in. And some of the things I've told you, I've never told you the whole story. I didn't want to burden you guys. I didn't. I guess I didn't want to put it on film. I. I don't know. It's very personal, and um, that's what's going on. That's where we are, and it's the probably the hardest thing. You know, you have a pet, you lose a pet. You have a parent, you lose a parent. You have a grandparent, you lose a grandparent. But losing your loved one, I mean, and I don't mean like your child. Every relationship you have with somebody is at a different level of of love, a different level of of agape or charity or whatever. Love has many different ways of, uh, of being explained. You can love ice cream. You can love a movie. You can love your mom or your dad or your, or your son or your dog. But the love you share with your spouse or your significant other really just goes it across all borders. And uh, when that person is no longer with you from such a tragic thing, it's huge absolutely huge I mean really huge if you truly love your spouse or your girlfriend or your significant other or whatever situation that you're in when that happens to you that's life really kicking you right between the legs you know that's really uh, that's the big one you know if you break up if you lose a if your relationship ends from divorce or something to that effect there may be a finality to it, but the person still exists. When we all meet that inevitable final chapter in our life, that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. So anyhow, sorry to be such a downer. Um, I just wanted to give you guys the heads up. That's why I have such difficulty. I, I, I look at myself as a hypocrite at times, you know, as I'm buying these figures and all that. Because... Like I said, again, trust me, the only reason I'm doing this is because I need the money now. That's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, it's a horrible experience. You lose somebody, everybody dies, everyone dies. For your information, you can push your sideshow payments to the next month. I've done that. Um, what I do, though, however, is... Um, I've only done the payments on a few figures. For instance, my Hulkbuster was on payments. But other than that, I just make the deposit and then pay it full when it arrives. I don't do payments. Um, so all of a sudden, I'm thrust into a $300 or $400 uh, price in that regards. You know, um, everyone has uh, what works best for them, and I think it's great that they have the payments. Um, and uh, if... Uh, you know, when you pay that deposit, if you don't get it, you lose the deposit. So that's the only bad thing about it. But if you have to lose $17 or $27 or whatever, 35 bucks or whatever it is, compared to having to spend $400 or something that you don't have the $400 to spend to, $35 ain't all that bad of a loss. It's a big deal. 35 bucks is 35 bucks. That's like almost a, a tank of gas. $50 is a tank of gas anymore out here in California. But it's a lot of money. But it's, it's not as much money as having to spend $400 for a figure which you can't afford at the time when you can't afford it. So, uh, I pushed my two-faced to four months after the first payment. Yeah, and it's neat to be able to do that. It sure is. I don't live with my mom 
she lives with me. <laughs> I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Thank you, CBS Sci-Fi. Bless you too, man. What Mercedes model do you have? I have a 2018 E350. Love it. It's my first Mercedes. My wife has had two or three uh, Mercedes. We're both in um, the computer industry. Uh, she was a um, network administrator. I'm a systems administrator. She's retired from work. She doesn't work anymore. So uh, she's on all of that. And I still work. And uh, I work from home. And uh, her last Mercedes, which we still have, that she's wanting to, she's been wanting to sell, is a uh, 2000 C220 compressor, luxury edition, and it's neat. Uh, but the 2018 E350 that I bought, um, oh man, the car drives itself. I had no intention of buying Mercedes-Benz, all right? Uh, as my wife has gotten older and she's had some medical problems, I, I started being concerned with her ability to drive safely, okay? Um, and I wanted her to be able to have a car that she could, she could drive safely. And this Mercedes drives itself, and I would say they're probably one of the safest cars on the road. You can't hit a person. You can't hit another Mercedes-Benz. It, it does its best to stay on the road. You, you can literally put it in cruise control and not even touch the steering wheel. It will tell you about every, I don't know, minute or so. It'll tell you you got to grab the steering wheel again. It'll drive down. It'll turn the whole nine yards. It, it, you can lock it into the speed limit. It'll stay at the speed limit. It, uh, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's smooth. It predicts the road. If it sees a, 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 a bump or something in the road, it, it, it adjusts the suspension. It has like this predictive crash sense. If it knows it's going to get into an accident, it does this thing to keep you from getting jarred about the seat belts. And it's amazing. It's a safe, amazing safe vehicle. And I bought the vehicle specifically with her in mind. If I was going to buy another vehicle for me, I would have bought an F-150 pickup truck or a Corvette or something to that effect. But uh, I, I was concerned that her health got to the point where she couldn't necessarily drive safely. I didn't think she could see the road at nighttime as well as, as, as she should be able to. And I'm not saying she had any accident or anything like that, but I was just feeling a little... I, I wanted to be more comfortable with her being able to drive. So that's why I bought the Mercedes. And then after buying the Mercedes, I was like, holy cow, I love this car. This car is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. It's an amazing, it's an amazing car. Um, and uh, I love it to death. So much so that I've, I've actually told my wife, I said, you know what? If I ever decide to get rid of the Bumblebee Camaro, I'd probably just buy me a, uh, um, a two-door sports coupe Mercedes as well. Because it's smooth as it is. I mean, driving the Camaro is a, is a muscle car. It's all about fast, hugging the curves, racing, it's getting down the road. The suspension is such that it will beat you up if it's on a rough road. Take the Mercedes on that same rough road. Dude, it's like riding on air. It's amazing. And um, there's a point where, you know, the fun versus luxury, you know, where do you stand in that regards? So, love the Mercedes. Love it. And it's a lease. And, uh, you know, the one of the things that they always say is you have to have a nice, you have to have better credit to lease a car than you do to buy a car. So, it's good to talk. It's good you have us and your hobby. And I love you guys, man. I, I got a, a, a card from one of uh, the family, from um, Eric. Thank you, Eric, for this card. I need to send you a card back. I really want to, really want to correspond back to you. And thank you for this. My wife was so pleased that this came. She she loves me. And uh, she was so apologetic for this and stressing us and putting us into a situation that we're in. And, and of course, you know, you have to understand that. You would be the same way. If you felt that you were putting a burden on your family, you would apologize to them, even though you didn't do it on your purpose. You know, life happened. You got in an accident or something happened. And, and all of a sudden, now your family's having to take care of you. You're going to apologize. I'm oh, sorry that you're having to do this for me. You want to else, you know, your pride's going to kick in. You're going to, be, you're going to feel sorry that you're, you're having to put your family through that. And so she has. But she was so happy to know that, that I have you guys. You know, you're part of the family. We're, we're this, this 
network here. And uh, that card meant so much to her. And I, I keep it here. Uh, and I, I will write back to you. And uh, that couldn't have come at a better time. So she's uh, she's supportive of the hobby, per se, of what I do. Because I'm not out there getting drunk. I'm not out there chasing women. I'm not out there, you know, gambling. Or uh, I don't smoke. I don't. I don't. That. I saw my buddy. Let's <laughs> figures. But it's, I guess it's harmless per se. You know, I don't write just do stuff that's outside of, you know, reality. I'm not writing bad checks to buy the figures, you know, to, to support a gambling habit. I don't have bad breath from cigarettes or, you know, whatever, you know. So uh, she's, she's uh, supportive of the hobby in that matter, but I don't think she would ever buy me a figure. I don't think she would ever do that. So uh, she tolerates it. She always likes to know how many people were tuned into this to the show uh, when we do these live shows. She 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 uh, sometimes she'll be in the mood to for me to show her one of the figures. I'll take her a figure and I'll say, "Oh, this is a really cool figure." Sometimes she looks at me and she'll say, "Yeah, what this cost?" And you know we don't have that discussion now. I, that's different from what it was before, but uh, you know. She, she uh, tolerates the hobby, but yeah, like I said, she, probably, she would probably never ever buy me a figure, <laughs> if that makes any sense. <laughs> I have a theory that the MCU only produces Audi cars. Sokovia was third world country, but had nothing but all the eight eight models. You know, it's funny when. Uh, which movie was it? Was it Civil War when we came out with an Acura MSX? Tommy did. My phone is ringing and it says Stanley Tree, so I won't be answering that. Let's see if we can wrap up this so we can keep talking. Good, we're good. Uh, I think he was driving an Acura, right? And uh, Captain America Civil War. Other than that, they were all Audi. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, it's an Audi world in the MCU. <laughs> uh, and I'd love to have an Audi. I've thought about, I think I'm probably too big for him. Was it uh, an R8? R8? R5? R8 that Tony drove in the first couple of movies? I think every one he had a different one. Uh, one, of, one, of, one of the years was an electric Audi. Yeah, I'd like to have a Tony Stark Audi. Uh, MC Universe. We love you too. Thank you very much, Ghost. Yeah, right. Yeah, no homo here, man. Homo sapien. I'm with you guys. So, uh, what else you want to talk about? How long have I had you on here? Two hours? I guess that's about it. For real, if any of you want any of these figures, for real, I would sell... I can honestly say the only one I wouldn't sell. Mark 21 Chrome. That's the only one I won't sell. I'll sell anything else. Anything. I sold my Mark 47. How insane do you got to be to sell the Mark 47? I'd sell that Mark 15 chrome. I'd sell anything here. <sighs> Hate to say that. I'd sell my Ironmonger. And I don't think I'm being unreasonable in any of the prices that I've quoted any of you guys. And uh, so. And I'm not depleting my collection. I would sell them only to pay the bills, and next year I'll be tracking these figures down again. I will get another Mark Forty Seven. I will. You can guarantee. You can bank on that. It'll be here. It will be back, right there where he belongs, right there in between my Mark Forty Six and the. Uh, love this little guy here. I forget what this is called. It was made by a third-party um, company. It's it's Tony from the Battle of New York in Endgame. It was the outfit that he wore underneath the uh, suit. 
I forget what they call that suit. I love this thing, the little Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on there. And that's where I had the 47 stood there. I'd always had intention of truthfully of uh, displaying the 47 uh, with Tony and with Tom Holland, um, where the big classic scene, my favorite scene, and uh, you guys know exactly what it is that I'm going to say. I guarantee you it's probably the, the scene that comes to your mind, too, when you think Spider-Man and, and the Mark 47, is the scene where Peter's, like, flipped totally out, and Tony's chewing his ass, and uh, Peter's telling him, if you even cared about me, you'd be here right now. You know, because remember, he was in the lake, and Iron Man came and drew him out of the lake, and, and he's like, wow, you came out here to rescue me? And he's like... Opened up his helmet. He's like, I'm not here, dude. I'm, I'm in over in Asia somewhere, India or something. And uh, um, so Peter truthfully was under the same impression at this con conversation that Tony wasn't there and he was just talking to an empty suit. And he's like, if you even cared, you'd be here. Shh, out comes the Mark 47 and out steps Tony. What a powerful scene. And then when Tony says something to the effect of, if you were to die, that's on me. And... Uh, so then, of course, you know, he lost the kid. You know, that's what he said when in uh, Endgame when he came back from Titan. I lost the kid, you know. So uh, such a prophetic scene, and that's what I always wanted to display. A Mark 47 with uh, Tony uh, in a suit and uh, Peter there uh, to remind us of that classic scene. That was my full-on intention of being able to display the Mark 47. I think that's a great scene that tells so much of the story that tells more than just the um, homecoming story that tells the whole story you know tells it all you know if you can't be spider-man without the suit you know you don't need the suit you need to be you without the suit the suit doesn't make you who you are you make you who you are so much so much being told and that little bitty segment there, that, those few minutes of that scene is huge for the whole, the whole 20-some movies, 23 movies, whatever it is. That really speaks volumes right there. That scene is as powerful, like I said, with the land speeder. Of, These aren't the droids you're looking for. He can go now. $25 keep on. I'm debating between Punisher War Armor or Spider-Man Advanced Suit. I can't pick between the two. Oh. Now, those two are two totally different two totally different uh, things. Both of them are video game series uh, figures. The Punisher War Machine is VGM 32, I think. And uh, the Advanced Suit is VGM 31. I don't remember. Um, the advanced suit is very unique. It is only in the video game. That suit came from nowhere else. That's not in the comics. That's not in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It is specifically from the video game. And it is a neat concept suit. Really cool. And I'm a huge, huge Spider-Man fan. I've always been a huge Spider-Man fan. My comic started with Batman and Superman when I was a little guy. And then I read some Archies, read some uh, Disney comics, and then I discovered Spider-Man. And that became my full-on love and passion. Well, Spider-Man, forgive me for having a, a runny nose. Crying causes that at times. But this suit is nowhere except in that video game. And it is really cool looking suit. It just looks cool. So if you're a, 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 a huge Spider-Man fan like myself, the neatness of this suit is well worth having. If you can only get one between the two. That's a tough decision, man. Um, I, I've ordered, again, I've ordered that Punisher War Machine. And what I really am probably going to do is I'm going to see if I can't track down a third-party head sculpt of the Netflix Punisher. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Frank. 
Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And there's third-party sculptors out there that have made that head sculpt. And uh, I'm thinking when that Netflix, uh, when that War Machine Punisher shows up, I'm thinking instead of having, you know, uh, the head sculpt on it of the, because essentially, if I remember correctly, for the most part, it's essentially a, a Mark IV without, how is it powered without an arc reactor? There's no arc reactor on that, on that Punisher. I don't understand. But uh, I'm just thinking about taking that off and putting on that Netflix head sculpt. Even though that's not the head from the video game that that figure is coming from. I think it's an important story to go with that. I wish I'd bought that Hot Toys Punisher when it came out. One of those figures that I didn't get at the time, and I wish I'd got it. I got the Daredevil. Love the Daredevil. I, and I, I just was like, ah, you know, I'm on the fence on this. Money was kind of tired at the time. I didn't have the extra 250 300 bucks, whatever it was, to get the figure. And I wish I'd had. I really wish that I got that uh, Hot Toys Punisher figure. And that's another one that's, you know, that's on that grail list. You know, it's like Loki, the Avengers Loki, the, uh, um, what's another one? Um, the uh, Black Widows, um, Odin. There's a lot of lot of pieces that I don't have that are that are grails, believe it or not, and uh, that is one, that Punisher is one, but uh, I I'm I'm getting I'm getting the War Machine Punisher as well, but they're such a, a huge difference these two figures are, I don't know how to help you figure that out as to which one to get. I, I love this guy, he's Spider Man. I mean, he's a unique Spider-Man. A Spider-Man that I've never seen anywhere, ever. And um, and he's well done. I mean, literally, they, these guys had the ability to create their own Spider-Man. I mean, how can you pass on that? How can you pass on the opportunity to build a brand new Spider-Man that had been nowhere ever? And that's what this is. And uh, it works. It 100% works. And I'm really happy to have him. And even though I just have him standing in a traditional pose, he's not like any other suit in any manner. The, the construction of the, the, the lines in him, the placement of the, the white markings on his outfit, he is truly unique. Truly unique. And if you are a Spider-Man fan... I think you would regret not getting him because of his uniqueness. I don't know how he's doing on the market. I don't know if there's if they have tons of them they can't get rid of. Maybe people don't like him because he's not a classic. Maybe they've sold are selling out on him. Maybe they just way overproduced him. I don't know what the story is on him. I love him and am very pleased to have him. Even though I don't own a PlayStation 4, I've never played the video game. I've seen the game played a lot on YouTube videos, and I would play that. I'd play the hell out of that game, um, I, I, but I, I just don't have it. So I, I don't know anything about, except for what I've learned watching YouTube videos about uh, the people playing the games and whatever else. And it looks really exciting. It looks like they did a really great job of building New York City. My wife was born and raised in New York City. She's watched some of the videos with me, and she really gets a kick out of seeing New York, it's really good faith reproduction of New York City. So if you're a fan of New York, if you live in New York, if you uh, want to know what it's like traveling through New York, it gives you that opportunity to do that. But I'm sold on this. And if price is a concern also, I'm sure he's a lot less expensive than what that War Machine Punisher is, too. But no, I don't envy you. If you can only get one, oh, man, that's tough. I'd say the Spider-Man, only because I'm biased to the Spider-Man. I love my war machines. I don't know. It's tough. Oh, I'm also a huge Spider-Man fan, but robots is what inspired me to pick my vocation. Oh, what do you do for a living? It would be easier if it was the 29... Ah, oh, the Miguel O'Hara. Oh, I truthfully think... What do we all like to do? We like to accuse Hot Toys of being a big cash cow... Uh, cash grabber or whatever, you know. Uh, Tony's been his their hot toys cash cow, you know. Tony's out. Hot toys needs to have another cash cow. Right here, right here. 
right here. Here's their new cash cow. Right here. This is it. What do they got? 25 suits or something like that in um, the, 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 the video game. And they've released now uh, the advanced suit, the negative suit, the spider punk, the uh, scarlet spider. Um, it, the cause babies, they've got a lot more. And it appears that they're releasing these suits closely to the ones that are being announced and released in the cause babies. Some of the ones that have come out next in line, after you know the advance and the spider punk and, and Scarlet Spider and the negative suit, have been the big time Spider-Man and the Spirit Spider-Man. And I would definitely jump on both of those. And I have a feeling that Shardimus for fact would be jumping on the big time Spider-Man. Big time Spidey has been Shardimus' uh, partner in crime. You know what I mean? Um, I think uh, I think a lot of us have a, an affection for the big time Spider-Man because of Shardimus Prime. Um, but Miguel O'Hara, when 2099 came out 30 years ago, whatever it was, Miguel was our first new Spider-Man, if you will. Quite an interesting way of uh, bringing that about. And uh, really, again, a brand new Spider-Man. Totally a brand new Spider-Man. And uh, that, I would have to say, was our first totally new, different, not traditional Spider-Man. And it worked. And yeah, I would so get on the 2099 for fact. And the negative version of that, too, what they call the white, 2099 white version. I, I would buy every single one of the Spider-Mans for fact. I would. And they're only just like a couple hundred bucks. We're talking about uh, Iron Man figures that are pushing four hundred dollars. These guys are two hundred, so it's a uh, it's a no brainer. And it's Spider Man. For the most part, what keeps Spider Man relatable is he's still just a regular kid. You, you know, even Miles Morales, still just the regular kid. Now, Peter Parker is, is, is a genius, extremely intelligent, so uh, he's got that going for him, just like Batman and Tony Stark do, but Batman and Tony Stark have all the money. Peter's a poor kid, you know, doesn't even have his parents. There's several, there's several stories as to what actually has happened to his parents. I don't know if they ever really told us definitively what truthfully happened to his parents, but, you know, he was raised by his aunt. He, he, he kind of feels responsible for the death of his uncle because he had the opportunity to stop the person who ended up killing him. And that story has been told in several different ways as well over, over the years. So just a normal kid thrust into a position of huge responsibility. And uh, it's all about dealing with life for a normal person who's happened to be given extraordinary ability and how he used that extraordinary ability. Do you do it for the good? Or you do it for the bad. It's like somebody had said one time, and it just kind of blew my mind on the thinking pattern of some of these people nowadays. He had said that his son had said to him, Wolverine I get, he says. I understand Wolverine's motivation. Batman I get, he says. I understand Batman's motivation. He then said, I don't understand Superman. He said he doesn't understand why Superman's a good guy. Essentially what he was saying was that he felt the only reason for doing good was to write something that had been done wrong to you. And I got a problem with that. And that bothers me that this generation doesn't understand that you should do good because it's the right thing to do. And that's what Superman is. Superman's the ultimate do-gooder. You know what I mean? He's an alien from another planet that was raised in small town Kansas, I think is where he was raised, Smallville, Kansas, by um, a, a, a couple that was unable to have children themselves. And 
They raised them of, of the values of truth, justice, and the American way, is what they used to say. And it all was about being the ultimate do-gooder. He literally helped people out for no benefit whatsoever for himself. He got no financial gain for it. He got no recognition for it, except for when he was wearing the Superman outfit. And he certainly didn't stick around much to get much, much benefit. He was gone. Take care of the problem, rescue, and leave. And then come back as mild-mannered Kent Clark. But for these young people to sit there and, and, and have to ask their father, what is Superman's motivation? That scares me. That really scares me. Do you guys not understand that you're being good is what you need to be? It really caught me off guard when he said that his son had told him that. I get Wolverine and I understand his motivation for doing what he does. I get Batman. I understand his motivation for doing what he does. I don't understand why Superman does good. That's crazy. That's crazy. Hopefully he uh, gets it. Hopefully you guys get it. Hopefully there's still some good left in the world, right? Mechanical engineer, there you go. Cool. It was Robocop and Macross. Is it Macross or Maycross? How do you say it? That made me love robots. Peter Parker is just your regular, really good looking genius that is married to a supermodel whose parents are spies. Hey, he was lucky to get Mary Jane. Uh, I really enjoyed reading the comics uh, for when he met her. His Aunt May and her friend, um, uh, I forget her name, uh, kept trying to tell Peter that he needed to meet her niece, I think is what it was. Oh, you need to meet her niece, you need to meet her niece. And, and Peter's like, you know, I don't need to be set up on a date, I don't need to meet anybody. At the time, Peter had dated Gwen Stacy, and Gwen died at his hands. Uh, he dated Betty Bryant. Betty Betty Bryant? Her name was Betty Bryant. She ended up marrying Ned Leeds. Um, she became Betty Leeds. Um, uh, and uh, he dated Betty, Betty, Betty Bryant. But other than that, he, he didn't have a lot of, of girlfriends. He had this, um, Spider-Man had this relationship with Felicia Hardy, or uh, the Black Cat, but he didn't know that Black Cat was Felicia Hardy, and Felicia Hardy didn't know that Spider-Man was Peter Parker in the beginning. But Spider-Man and Black Cat had a relationship. And they kept trying to tell him he needed to hook up with, he needs to meet this niece. He needs to meet, Aunt May kept telling him, you need to meet my friend's niece. And he's like, no, no, no. And he kept trying to dodge the bullet, kept trying to dodge the bullet, kept trying to dodge the bullet. And uh, he didn't want to meet her, didn't want to meet her, because he's like, oh, geez, yeah, if I'm having to be set up with her, she must be a mess. And uh, he, on one of the times when he was trying to escape, he opened the door and there she was. And her, her word, I believe if I remember correctly, she says, face it, Tiger, you just hit the jackpot. And that was all, all wrote. And uh, then she became, you know, a, a model and, and a soap opera star and movie star and all sorts of other stuff and drop dead gorgeous. And she was gorgeous there in the first place. And yeah, he really lucked out. But... Uh, no, he wasn't so fortunate in the first place. You know, the fact that he had Gwen Stacy and then she died, you know, she was more girl for him than, than what it was. You know, Flash Thompson was, you know, the, the guy, and Peter was the guy who was always picked on by Flash, you know, for being smart. Isn't that funny? But yeah, he, he hit the jackpot. Face the tiger, you, hit the jack, you just hit the jackpot. I can relate to Peter Parker. I also have an aunt. Are you living with your aunt? First pick, Muckross. It's not Maycross, Muckross. The new sex robots is going to make me love. <laughs> you know, uh, what was that movie, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger? I think it was called uh, The Sixth Day or something to that effect, where one of the guys that he um, uh, shared a business with, they had like a, a tour business or something 
that they did uh, uh, with their little helicopters. Um, instead of him having a relationship with a real person, he had a relationship with a, a type of a holographic um, generated female. And in the Blade Runner 2049, same thing. He had a relationship with a holographic generated female. And the whole Blade Runner story as well is, is about, you know, that uh, Pris was a pleasure robot made for that. You know, it's so interesting how people have predicted the future AI, the movie AI, with Halle Joel Osment in it. Again, had the pleasure robots. It's really um, interesting how people have predicted the future of those being the needs for relationship uh, fulfillment. It takes work to have a relationship with somebody. You have to compromise totally, always. Both of you do. Um, she compromises for you, you compromise for her, whichever the case is, for something. There's not one time when you're always on top, you're always having to compromise. And uh, in these scenarios where people are, have been able to get their fulfillment for relationship and need with an autonomous object or holographic object which provides them the fantasy you have no compromise and it makes me wonder you know when people are starting to wonder why superman does what he does what would be the fate of our future generations if we totally just disconnect and stop compromising and become selfish the only reason we do anything good is for our own benefit the only reason we do anything is for revenge where would that put us at? That could be a mess. That could be an absolute mess. You know, it's one of the things that they say, a locked door, or any lock, just keeps an honest person honest. The whole purpose of a lock it does nothing but keep an honest person honest. A thief, a lock does not stop a thief. And if our society gets to the point where People don't want to do good, don't want to compromise, they don't feel the need to do anything right. We're just talking about pure, full-on chaos at that point. John Lydon, his professional name is Johnny Rotten from the Sex Pistols, he had said one time, this was back in the early 80s, late 70s, I don't remember exactly when it was that he said this. He had said, Speaking of the United States of America, he said, what the United States needs, he actually said what America needs, but he was referring to the United States, not Canada, Mexico. He goes, what America needs is a little bit of anarchy. He says, but I'll be damned if I'm the one to give it to him. To some degree, I agree with that. You don't necessarily want to full-on totally sell yourself to whatever somebody tells you you have to do. You know what I mean? You have to be able to make your own decisions, your own judgments. You have to have a guide of your own self conscience your goodness inside of you to make your decisions. But at the same token, you still have to follow what is the best for everyone. There's that compromise again, you know? You don't want to surrender to the point where you lose your rights, but you don't want to fight it so much that you end up being the sabo of the cog in the wheel. You know, you don't want to break the progress, but you don't want to lose your self-identity. I heard something the other day, something to the effect of, you know, we all die. There's nothing that you can do to stop that. For instance, uh, here's another way of saying the same thing. I was going to say it in one way, but I just remembered another one. The only sure thing in life is death. For without it, man would not strive to leave his mark on the earth. And that's what we all try to do. We all want to just make sure that somewhere, someone, somebody knew 
that we live, that we made a difference. And hopefully that difference is for the positive. Hopefully you can leave the world in a better position than it was when it was handed to you. And that's our life. That's the whole meaning and the purpose of life. I'm not me, I'm you. <laughs> Spider-Man, who are you? I'm not me, I'm you. <laughs> Technology and some of these robots, what are coming out are fantastic. We're going to go a long way. I am really impressed with what I've seen. And with the minds of creators and artists and um, writers who are able to envision this, just so long as they you know follow the rules of Isaac Asimov, you know, rule number one: do no harm, right? The Prime Directive: Robocop, iRobot, AI. Follow that. Those rules, as long as they follow those explicitly, then we're good to go. I loved when the mayor of Portland pleaded to scientists on TV to make a Robocop because crime was so bad. Robocop was quite an interesting movie. Ed 209. Ed 209. Terminator T-800, T-2000, T-1000. What's the new ones now? What what are the what are the T what terminators are they on now? The Matrix. You know. Who's to know what direction the future really will go? It's amazing when you think for thousands of years we've been here. You know, recorded history is what five thousand years old. I think is recorded history, more or less. Um, the planet is supposedly millions of years old. The universe is. Billions of years old. But we only have 5,000 years of recorded history. Where were we before that? And how is it that we went for so many thousands of years, and now within the last 150 years, the light bulb literally came on? What changed? I have no idea. I just find it amazing. You know, was it 19, 19, what year was it, Kitty Hawk? 1911? Where Orbo and Wilbur made the first powered flight? It's crazy. It's crazy how quickly technology just opened up in the last 150 years. I mean, Leonardo da Vinci is probably the most intelligent man that ever existed that we know of. He didn't invent all that. He didn't have microwaves, cell phones, video cameras. What changed? What really changed? Revision Rev Nine is that what they call it? Rev Nine, the new Terminator. Oh man, we've talked about a lot today, haven't we? I got a mess here of figures on my desk. In Dark Fate, I didn't get why Legion knew of Skynet and Terminator in their timeline. Uh, Skynet never existed, so why would they call the Rev 9 a Terminator? I didn't see that. Um, so I can't answer that. So that's a that's a that's a flaw in the story, huh? I I hate whenever they do that whenever a writer writes for a uh, an existing time or an existing franchise and they get it wrong as to how things were it makes it real difficult but sometimes something like that is put into play and then revealed later how that came about you know what i mean space 1999 had a had have you heard the rumors about the moon base and new Area 51?
You talking about real? Or you talking about the television show that was based nineteen ninety nine, where they were they literally had a poon base. You talking about you talking about conspiracy theory stuff? I mean, it would make sense for them to be a new Area fifty one. The whole purpose of Area fifty one was for us to be able to do our military testing on products that we don't want anybody else to know that we have. And Area fifty one is so out there. I mean, it's still totally restricted. They still have the authority to shoot to kill you if you cross onto their facility. Um, but it's almost like, it's like when um, the, uh, what was it? The F-117 and the B-2, B, B-2 bomber, the stealth bomber, when, um, when those were revealed, one of them they told us about and the other one they did not. I forget which one it was. I think it was, they told us about, I think they told us about the B-2 bomber. They did not tell us about the F-117 stealth fighter. I remember correctly. And so it makes you think maybe they, they told us about Area 51 because there's now an Area 52 we don't, we don't know anything about. And, and yeah, there's the big question. How come we haven't gone back to the moon? Maybe we have. Maybe we actually got people living up there. Who knows? I'd have a hard time believing that, though, I'll tell you the truth. I would have a hard time believing that anyone's living on the moon. I think it's inhospitable. Any way you look at it, I don't think you can live on the moon. Radiation, lack of gravity, lack of food, lack of oxygen, lack of an atmosphere. I, I think it's impossible. So totally impractical. I don't think it's possible for me. When Star Trek was on TV, we have had a lot of... For real. Uh, it was funny in um, talking about how they'll say something now and it'd be different later. In the Star Trek Generations, I think, was the movie where they helped... Um, I forget his name. The father of the warp engine. When they helped him create his warp engine, um, Riker made a comment about seeing the colonies on the moon. And then when they retold that story, they didn't continue that with the colonies on the moon um, storyline. So it was interesting that they had forgotten that he made those comments. Rumors of the New 51 is a spaceport to take people up there. Really? Interesting. It's so funny, you know, there's always been conspiracy theories. There's always going to be conspiracy theories. And sometimes they end up being fact. You never know. Talking so much about space, maybe miss the movie Gattaca. I don't remember if I'd seen that or not. I remember that I remember the name. I don't remember anything about the movie. I'll have to check it out. I know the name. I don't know why I can't place the movie. So. Well, guys, what else you want to talk about? I think I probably talked you out. I think I probably need to go say good morning to my wife and give her some breakfast. She's probably hungry. I have to take care of her now. She's, uh, She needs help with everything, being dressed, bathing. Uh, she can't make any of her, her meals. She can feed herself, but um, she's just not capable of, um, it's like having a little kid. Literally, literally like having a little child in the house. And I'm not saying because she's lost her mind. She just doesn't have the strength to uh, do things anymore. So... tough man it is really tough it's a wicked movie it's about DNA splicing it's interesting we're out growing the planet and using all of its resources that's true what is the next step to toys you think it will be announced um I think we're going to get uh, either a uh, big time spider-man or the ghost the spirit spider-man oh that would be cool um, I think, um, 
<laughs> We're going to get the uh, Mark 1 diecast announced also soon. Iron Man Mark 1 diecast. Um, Hot Toys hasn't made a uh, Joker yet, have they? Uh, what's his name? The new Joker movie. I thought it says, have they made, have they made one of those? I don't think they have. I think they'll make one of those. That's what I think is coming up. High velocity and original recipe still are pending for pre-order. Oh, right, 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 right. The high velocity suit. That will be the next one because it's already been sh shown at uh, Toy Fair or something up in New York City. Uh, we've already seen that. That will be the absolute next one. You're absolutely right. That's next. Uh, and uh, like I said, if you uh, look at the Cos Babies and see which Spider-Mans that they've released there, you'll see that they've done uh, the high velocity suit. and But they've also done the Spirit, the Big Time, and the twenty ninety nine, I believe, are the ones that they've done, uh, in addition to the ones that we've already had in one six scale. So they seem to be following pretty closely to the uh, release of how the Cos Babies have been released for that. So I would, I have a feeling, like you said, high velocity would be next, uh, and then um, I have a feeling it'll either be the Big Time or the uh, Spirit Spider Man or twenty ninety nine. But I'm, I'm leaning probably towards Big Time or Spirit. Big Time because he'd be so easy to make. Black with the green glowing on him. And it would be cool if they do that in conjunction with the neons that they've been doing with the uh, Iron Man. So you got the um, the blue neon Mark IV, the yellow neon Mark VI, the orange neon War Machine Mark I, green neon on the Big Time. It would be certainly cool. That would certainly be very cool. So uh, I would like to see that. I would like to see them make the Big Time Spider-Man. And they've already made it in the Cos Baby. I'd like to see them make the Big Time Spider-Man and then make that the green neon. Green's easy to make glow in the dark. We've had green glow in the dark for decades. Forever. Phosphorus of that. So it should be easy to do that, especially with the, with the UV light. That's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see the Big Time Spider-Man Spider-Man, and I'd like to see him uh, with the glow in the dark green, whether it be UV or just from regular charged light. I would like to see that. That'd be cool. But yeah, high velocity has already been shown. Original recipe. Uh, they did show that uh, suit with the um, case, uh, like um, Tony showed him when. He showed him like the Iron Spider. They did show that. Uh, whether or not that will ever be released, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's one of those things that Hot Toys shows something, and then we never get it like a TIE Fighter. And um, I don't know if we'll ever get that. But is that what you mean, the original recipe? You mean the original soup? Do I speak Spanish? Who are you asking? Me? I, I took a year in Spanish. Do I speak it now? I would be a fool to try. I took I took a year of Spanish, like a year of French, and a year of German, and um, then I have a uh, uh, when I was growing up, the one of my neighbors had a a uh, cousin who was deaf, so I learned American Sign Language too. So when I was younger, I learned enough to be dangerous. German, French, Spanish, and American Sign Language. How much of it do I speak now? None. I mean, I suppose it wouldn't take me long to start picking up some and learn more. But no, I don't. I don't. I, I, I would be doing an injustice to say that I spoke any of the languages. You know, I took a year of it in school, each one of those. Which gave me, I think, a better understanding of being able to understand how language is formulated and to be able to learn words or, or why things are such. 
My brother-in-law has lived in Japan for 40 years. So obviously he's totally fluent in Japanese. He was born here in the United States, raised here in the United States after he graduated college. He, um, after he got his college degree, he took Japanese as his language in college and went to Japan and has worked over there for the rest of his life. Uh, matter of fact, he's been there so long that when he comes back to the United States, he's like lost because of the way they do things in Japan. He's become more or less Japanese. Uh, he lives the culture of, of living in Japan for most of his life. And uh, so when he comes back here, he doesn't act like an American. He acts like a, he's Japanese. Um, so obviously he speaks Japanese. And my wife spoke um, Italian. And uh, she learned Latin uh, from her faith, religious faith, Catholic faith. And um, so between all of us, we got a lot of languages that we could piece together. But no, I, I'm not fluent in anything other than English, if I'm even fluent in English. Who would win in a fight, Aunt May or Ma Kent? Oh, Aunt May, because she was... Okay. Marissa Tomei would win. That's what I'll say. In some states of the United States, Spanish is spoken right. There are some parts of Texas where they speak Spanish primarily. Uh, and in Puerto Rico, they speak Spanish primarily. Puerto Rico is a uh, territory of the United States. It's the closest thing you can be to being a state of the United States without being a state. So I don't think they pay federal income tax, and I don't think they can vote for the President of the United States. I don't remember what it is that they don't have by being a Puerto Rican citizen living in Puerto Rico. Now, if you move out of Puerto Rico and move into one of the states, you get those rights, but you also have to start paying federal income tax. But I don't think they pay federal income tax, and I don't think they, uh, but I also don't think they get to vote for the President of the United States. I may be wrong there. I don't remember what it is. It's like District of Columbia also is not a state. So we have a lot of Territories. We have the America Samoa Islands, and uh, there's three or four other islands that we have that are territories of the United States that are not states. And being there, you have the rights of being an American citizen, but you don't necessarily have all the rights that an American citizen is afforded, but also you don't have all the responsibility that Americans are required to do. For instance, pay your federal income tax. Um, but yeah, there are some parts of Texas that are right on the border of Mexico that I know for a fact that they uh, are, have so many um, people there that speak Spanish that they do a lot of their business dealings and city dealings in Spanish. There is no official language of the United States of America. We've never, Congress has never sat down and said, English is what we speak. We don't have an official language. We have spoken English for hundreds of years, and it's kind of have been the unofficial language because everything was written in, in English. But now things are changing where they start have putting things in multiple languages because we don't have an official language. So the way the United States is, is if a body of people decide that they want to use this language to communicate with, then that's what they, that's what they use to communicate with. So I know for a fact there are some cities in Texas where the majority of the people are um, more fluent in Spanish than they are in English, and so a lot of their business dealings are done in Spanish. That's an absolute fact. Miami, Florida. Uh, I think English is, is predominant in Miami, Florida, but there are definitely some sections of Florida, Miami, Florida, that uh, you would find probably more people speaking Spanish than you would English, but, you know, the... Um, the police there, they speak English predominantly. The, the, uh, the, the um, city offices predominantly speak English. If you were to call Puerto Rico, if you were to get on the phone and call a business in Puerto Rico, they're going to answer the phone speaking to you in Spanish. They're going to say, hola, or whatever it is that they, uh, the way that they would communicate in, in Puerto Rico, because Puerto Rico, the predominant language is, is Puerto Rican, is, is, is a form of Spanish. 
And but however, when you call there and um, you are doing business with them, if you say, if you say English, please, they are, they'll speak English. Um, because from my understanding, the majority of them as well are just as 100% fluent in English, but that's not their first language, it's Puerto Rican, whatever that actually translates into. So, because it's not a state of the United States. And even still, there is no official language of the United States. People have wanted us to have an, an official language, to adopt an official language, and the English are quick to point out that we don't speak English. We actually speak American. And, you know, we joke about some of the differences, you know, like uh, we call it an elevator, they call it a lift. We call it a, uh, a toilet, they call it a loo. Um, we call it the ground floor, they call it the first floor. You know, we call it a, um, a potato chip, they call it a, 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 a crisp. We call it a cookie, they call it a biscuit. You know, there's, there's words that just aren't the same. We say aluminum, they say aluminium, spelled exactly the same way. So they're quick to say that we don't speak English. Uh, and they're from England. England speaks English. Um, and they're quick to say that we don't. So we call it English, but it certainly isn't what they speak in England. But it's not so different that we have a hard time understanding each other. You know what I mean? It's not like we have to have a translator when we go over there and vice versa. I think English and Spanish are the most important languages, in my opinion. What do you think? In the Western civilization, I would say they're probably the strongest. I would say, personally, French, when I, was, when I took the, those languages, I would say French is probably the most complete language. I think, I think French has more words for things than any other language. I may be wrong. But I have a feeling that the French language is a more complete language. I think you can say things in French that can be um, more solid, solidly based on the inability for misinterpretation. I think if you were to say something in French, you could say it in such a manner that it cannot be open for interpretation from any other way other than what it is. Whereas... In Spanish and in English, I know for a fact, you can say something and it cannot necessarily be understood for what it is that you are trying to say. So you can say something, but it isn't necessarily going to mean it's what you're trying to say. You know what I mean? For instance, if I say on the wall, something on the wall, hang a picture on the wall. Or something to that effect. Put that on the wall. I understand that meaning to place it on the wall. Like a picture hanging on the wall. But if I remember correctly from when I was taking French. On the wall in French would literally mean on the top of the wall. Not on the wall. Like you hang a picture on the wall. They would say, you know, on the wall. So when they would say to hang a picture on the wall is different than saying sitting on top of the wall. Or we would say, on the wall, and you're supposed to understand what I'm saying from the context of the conversation of what is implied, but not necessarily spoken. So I remember correctly from my French, when I took French in school many years ago, um, the French have probably the most way of being able to explain something in a manner that there's no question about what is being said. When they say, on the wall, you know exactly what they mean as far as on the wall or on the wall. You know what I mean? So, uh, it's kind of like in German. They have, we have a uh, one word cousin. I say, uh, I'm going to go hang out with my cousin. You don't have any idea what I'm talking about, a boy cousin or a girl cousin. It's just a cousin. It's a description of somebody who is the, the sibling of a aunt or uncle of mine. So, it would be like my parents, brother's sister, child is my cousin. But it's one word cousin for boys and girls. And in German, there's two separate words. Boy cousins and girl cousins, they have two separate words. So whenever they say they're going to go hang up with their cousin, they're going to sleep with their cousin. You know, you know whether or not they're saying they're going to sleep with their cousin or whether they're going to sleep with their cousin. You know what I mean? So um, there's a lot of uh, English and Spanish that are uh, up for interpretation. Or the words aren't necessarily um, 
direct and specific in what it is that they, they truthfully are trying to say. From my understanding, Portuguese is an extremely hard language. Um, it's kind of, from my understanding, it has um, qualities of both Spanish and French. And uh, they claim that it's, it's the hardest language to learn. I don't have any personal experience on that. I don't know. But that's what I've been told. And maybe that has something to do with the fact that the French have such an exacting way of explaining everything. And um, um, maybe that's why Portuguese is such a different, difficult language. I couldn't tell you. I don't know. Literally depending on the context. Literally depending on what it is that we're talking about. What it is that I'm trying to convey to you. So you have to know what it is that I'm referring to, you know, in Star Trek, um, Deanna Troy's character has a really good um, explanation of this. When they were talking about, the, um, they were trying to, to uh, explain things. Uh, I don't remember which episode it was specifically, but it, I don't remember if it was the ones where the people couldn't speak and they and they uh, they were deaf more or less or or. Uh, they thought through their minds and they had to have a translator or interpreter that spoke for them and the interpreter died and the person could no longer speak because they didn't speak. And they had to have an interpreter for it, whether it was that episode or whether it was the one where Picard had to be on there with the arms wide open, you know, the ship traveled across the sea or whatever it was, where they spoke in 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 um in in uh, sentences from like books or uh, you know uh, arms wide open or whatever you know it meant something and so Deanna was trying to explain to them when she offers her coffee cup up to you or something to that effect I don't remember exactly what it was but she offers the coffee cup you know she said she says what am I what am I doing when I do this if that's all you get if you get just this. What am I doing? Am I offering it to you? Am I asking for a refill? Am I am I just throwing it up in the air? Am I saying, what is this? Who knows? There's the whole context of the conversation to be able to help you to understand what it is that's actually being conveyed or desired or wished or expressed or, or stated. You know, just words without context are, are difficult to interpret. That's the hardest thing about emails and text messages. There's no emotion behind them per se. The emotion is created when you read it. So you could say something in an email or a text and your emotional response could be in one manner. And the person reading it, their state of mind might be totally different. And they could take offense to what is written even though when it was put to paper it wasn't written in an offensive manner, but the wording wasn't spelled out specifically enough for it to be interpreted the way that it is. And uh, that's why it's so difficult in interpretations. You have to be careful with the person that's translating for you, that you have to make sure they understand all of the fluctuations and all of the other possible explanations for the words because they can totally, totally screw up a translation. There's a funny commercial on television now where the guy's like supposedly translating between these two business opportunities. And he says something about, uh, the guy says to him, tell him that we're extremely flexible in trying to get this business merger. Tell him that we're extremely flexible. flexible. And the guy translates into them and he says, uh, he says he's very bendy. And then he says, uh, he says, uh, tell him that, uh, um, I forget what it was. He says something like, tell him we're very amicable about getting this relationship or whatever. And he ends up turning it into saying, um, he needs a hug. And it was has nothing to do with what he was saying, but in the way that it could have been translated, it totally could have been accepted that way. So I would have to say, again, I, I stick to my guns and, and in my belief of what I know, that French is probably the, the most inexcusable for not understanding what's being said from the way the words are put together. And many other languages are really hard to make sure you understand what you are saying compared to what somebody else is understanding what you're saying. When I use Google Translate, for instance, if I'm typing a response to somebody or somebody types to me in Spanish or something and I respond back to them in Spanish, I'll take what they said, throw it in Google Translate, and Google will tell me what they claim that this is what the person said. I'll then spin it around and say, now translate it back into Spanish or whatever. And if it doesn't come back exactly, then something is wrong there. And also, if I'm if I'm sending it out to that way, 
I'll type it. I'll get the Spanish. I'll put the Spanish back in there, and I'll say, and I'll say it back in English. And if it and if it's kosher, if it if it totally comes back both ways, then I'm confident that that translation is is well enough that there there won't be any problem with it. But if I say something, and then the Google translates into Spanish, and the Spanish then I say now translate that Spanish sentence back into English, and it doesn't come back the same way that I said it, then I find another way to say the same sentence. So always check, as in the process of learning, like you said, you're learning English, always check that what you're saying also translates back to what you said. So when you say something, and it translates into the language that you're trying to convert it into, now convert it back into what it was that you said. And if it comes away, if it comes back both ways, if it's truthfully equal, it will truthfully be equal. If A equals B, then B must equal A in order for it to be a true sentence. A can equal B, but B doesn't have to equal A. But in communications for language translations, A must equal B and B must equal A in order for it to be a true translation. So keep that in mind as you're learning the language. And I applaud you in um, trying to, to learn English. And you're doing a great job uh, with your English. You're doing great. The world of language is fascinating and complicated at the same time. I agree. And um, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. As the world becomes more and more communicating, more connected, language barrier is getting less and less. And uh, in Star Trek, for instance, they have the Universal Translator. And it's funny, somebody had made a comment one time, and I, and I find it quite interesting to say this, and that they claim the Universal Translator system in Star Trek, the way it works is you speak your native language, and everyone hears not what you speak, but only what they need to hear. So, for instance, when they had made that comment, they then said, with that in mind, Jean-Luc Picard, being from France, every single word that he spoke, he spoke in French. That was this person's theory. That Jean-Luc was constantly up there, only speaking French, and the Universal Translator converted it into English, and that's what we all heard. And it, we accepted that his lips were speaking French, or English, even though, according to this person's theory of explaining how the Universal Translator worked in Star Trek, Jean-Luc Picard was speaking French the entire time. So think about that and have that blow your mind. The next question somebody said after saying that, well, well, there's many times when he makes French statements. Well, there are some times whenever we make a statement and we use uh, a foreign language specifically because there really is no other ideal way of saying that. For instance, um, a uh, very common French phrase is voila. And currently in the last handful of years, some people have been saying it incorrectly, and it really irks me that they've totally destroyed this word. But voila means more or less, well, there it is. And people are now saying voila. It's not voila. It's voila. It's, it's, a, it's a very pronounced V. Voila. That means there it is. And, and if I were to say voila, I wouldn't need to have a universal translator turn it into there it is. We know what voila means. When I say voila, you know what that means. So if John Luc Picard were to say uh, voila, the Universal Translator wouldn't convert it because it's what we all recognize as a word that we accept as meaning voila, eureka, you know, I found it, another word that uh, doesn't need to be translated, it is what is, is, is accepted, eureka, I found it, you know, we understand that, and uh, so there's going to be words you don't have to translate, you know, let me see if I can think of a Spanish word that uh, we can say that we don't need to have a translation for because we we know what it is. I can't think of anything right now. But, um, you know, there are words that you just will always just be there because it works. There's no question about what it is. Everybody recognizes that as a word that's also, you know, used for that. 
but I applaud you for uh, learning English. And uh, I, I wish that people took more um, what's the word I'm looking for? I wish that people took learning other languages a little more serious than what we do. You know, we're really uh, complacent in our lives and in our own inner circle and in our own dwelling, and we don't necessarily you know, expand our knowledge beyond that. I think if everyone learned a foreign language of some sort, it'll help you speak your own language better because as you have to restructure your brain around whether a verb or a noun comes first or whether the is placed there or after, depending on what language you're speaking, because the sentences are structured differently, it helps you then as well speak your own language better because you have to keep in mind how words are put together to form a sentence. Google Translator sometimes doesn't help. Well, mate, I have to go. Nice to meet you, and thanks for your answers. See you next time. Every Saturday I will be here, and uh, if I'm not, I uh, will give you a reason as to why I'm not. And it's been very rare that I haven't been here. I've been late a couple of times, but you'll see me here every Saturday. And welcome to the family, and I thank all of you all for tuning in. And, um, you know, I, as you've seen, I'll pull the figures out, and we'll talk about the figures, and I'll give you room tours or whatever you want, man. Um, I, I enjoy the time with you, and I hope you enjoy the time with me. And thank you very much, every one of you, for tuning in. And uh, if you've got nothing else, I think I'm going to end the stream. We've been on the phone now for, gosh, over three hours. And I, I love every one of you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, I really look forward to spending the time with you that we do. I have a Patreon, uh, Siri Emerald. Go there. If, if you if you want to help me out, throw a dollar my way a month. That'd be great. I mean, a dollar's not much at all. Uh, but if every one of you were to, to help out, sheesh, that would really be immense. Share these videos with your friends. Like them. Subscribe. Um, and uh, comment in the sections below. I, I respond. It's very rare that I don't respond to a comment. So if you got any questions or anything. And like I said, again, the figures are for sale. Contact me. And uh, I'll maybe Facebook Messenger. Uh, I have once to scale news and reviews. You guys can post on there. Best of my knowledge, you guys can post in there. If you have any once to scale news and reviews you want to talk about, you want to throw throw something up, thoughts, opinions, anything comes to your mind, put it up in their Facebook or once to scale news and reviews. And um, contact me through Facebook Messenger. Send me an email, sorry at Gmail. I've got uh, contact information in, in the in the description here. I have a uh, post office box. You guys can send me stuff. I received a card in the mail. My wife loved that a card came. Send her a card. She would love to get cards from you guys. You know, throw if you if you if you feel so inclined, drop her a get well card or or anything. You know, just say hi. You know, it, that's the greatest thing you can ever do to somebody is to make them know that you know that they are there. There are people who walk the world who feel that they are invisible, who feel that there's no one that cares for them anymore. You know what I mean? And the best thing you can do for anybody is let them know that you know that they are in their they are in your thoughts. Do I have a P.O. box? You can send me stuff. I'll open stuff up here. Uh, you know, send me artwork. Whatever you want. I don't care. Um, communicate. So thanks very much again. Love every one of y'all. Check out the other show, channels I've got uh, or what the other videos I've got. I don't know how many videos I've got. A hundred or so easily. And um, thank you very much. Y'all have a good one. Peace out. Love every one of you. See you next week.